Hello and welcome to Spitfire episode 54. And uh, Tan's already gone to bits, uh, mainly because he's useless at producing. But of course, my name is Bryce and I'll be bringing you the topics this week and waving my way through. Chris Tan will be making elementary mistakes in production and chipping in when he can. But more importantly, our guests, and I say guests for now, but we've got starting with one, uh, Adam Fitch, of course, uh, a, a journalist, uh, kind of getting yourself a little bit of renown as a journalist now. Uh, you, you've been on before, but we are very much happy to have you back. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I, I put out an opinion piece about uh, the league just before it got got going. <laughs> yes. and, I, and ever since then, everyone's been coming to me for some Call of Duty opinions. So uh, I've also been watching and playing for about 10, 11 years, maybe 12 now at this point. So hopefully I can bring some sort of insight. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope so too. I think, um, as I said in the pre-show, if people were around for the pre-show, I believe context is very, very important and, and you've got to present different arguments, right? Like... There are very much a lot of positives we're going to take away from this because obviously this is an episode about the Call of Duty League, its first event, what was good, what was bad, how the teams get on, uh, and an ESPN article that I saw about power rankings, which I've got a particular problem with and not because of the way they organized it, but something else. But we'll get onto that in just a little bit. Let's talk about the franchise leagues. Finally here, big fanfare. Uh, How do I start this off? I'm trying to think of a positive carefully, to start with. But carefully? I, no, not, not, it's, it's not carefully. It's no, more no, careful. in... No. in there, there's so much to unpack, right? The problem with this is we, we've watched three days of new production, new talent, new teams, uh, new ways of looking at things, new fucking platform, everything, right? There is, there is so much to talk about. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, I thought we went to YouTube. So we're on YouTube now and MLG.TV. A yep. uh, little bit late for the announcement. That was kind of a running theme coming up to this. And I understand there's been a lot to unpack and get done. Um, but we're on the YouTube and I don't hate it. I don't hate going on the YouTube. Numbers weren't terrible. Um, they were actually pretty much what I expected. Actually, probably a little bit better than I was expecting. I was expecting maybe 100, 150K on Twitch. YouTube's harder to find. It's not bad. And I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump straight to you for this one. Let's talk about that. The YouTube switch is a big thing for Call of Duty. Yeah, it's, it's a big dick play by Google and, and YouTube, you know. Like, they've just come in with big dick energy, sweeped up all of, seemingly all of Activision, Activision Blizzard's titles. So, I mean, it's bigger than COD, but, I mean, obviously, it's, COD's very, very much a big part of it. They're, they're banking on this to pull in some numbers. And, and I'm pretty sure, while the league was going on, if you typed in Call of Duty on the YouTube search, you couldn't actually find the stream. You had to type in Call of Duty League, right? I think it was, was at, at uh, first you couldn't find know. it. Okay. Yeah, at so, first, so, I think later on it became... I, I, th- yeah. I think what they'll do is they'll find the footing as time goes on, but initially it, w- it wasn't anything great. I mean, the fact that you can't clip things instantly kind of hinders it for me. Like, you can't just bang things online and, and share them and, and get other people involved. Straight away, I'll get people enticed into watching. So, I mean, th- th- there are some inherent problems with YouTube, but also some um, inherent positives over Twitch as well, you know? So, it, it just depends how how really they embrace things. Obviously, having Fwiz at the helm of it all is, is a positive sign. Helps. He loves he yeah. loves COD, so that that's a positive sign for me. Um, but yeah, like have, have making you making it known that YouTube was available or YouTube will be will be the place to go to watch it maybe two weeks in advance or something at least, so people actually know where to go and can go subscribe and put notifications on and such instead of just whapping it out a couple hours beforehand. Like yeah. it, it seems like a bit of an oversight, but we obviously don't have the full context as to when the deal was done and, and why they launched it when they did. I think in terms of the context for that, I, I, from what I can tell, there's been like a lot, it's been really crazy behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Like the the thing with this is because it's such a big launch and it's what people don't get, right? They, they ask about these changes and so on and so forth. This shit doesn't move fast. There's there's cogs and they've got to go all the way up and all the way down. And they don't even get all the way back down sometimes. They have to fucking marketing. It goes off to the side and there's, you know, there's a PR team working out and that goes back up with suggestions and, this whole fucking machinery needs to move to get things changed. Um, but I will agree, a little bit late on the announcement. Um, it's interesting because they've been talking about this, and you said about Fwiz, right? I, I agree with what you said on Fwiz. I think Fwiz is going to take this very, very personally at all points. Right? There's no way he's going to be happy without anything but perfection on YouTube with Call of Duty. It's personal to him. It's going to mean that he is so invested that he will be pulling whatever strings he can behind the scenes and, and making it a priority. And, right, and, and you don't always get that with other streaming services, right? You just don't have somebody that connected to the game. 
Yeah, I I think you know me and you have known Fizz for a long time, and we we know that the, the guy he loves Call of Duty, and he, he still seems to enjoy like the scene. He seems, still seems to follow it, and to have him as a friend of the scene, and then potentially be one of the ones pushing the agenda for YouTube on this is a good positive thing, irrelevant of what other people think of YouTube, etc. In, in terms of a streaming platform, it's a good positive move. I I, I but I absolutely agree in terms of the lateness. Uh, yeah, that, that was pretty crazy. But I mean, as you've already explained, it's not surprising after some of the things like we've heard have transpired personally. <laughs> we're like, you know, it's just we've got to be very careful this week, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, to the point of where, like, I think it was, and I, I, I don't mind saying this, like, like even like a well, a five or six days before the event, and I, I was sort of like up in the air whether I was doing something to do with it or not. I didn't know, <laughs> and it was like. Obviously, it transpired that we weren't involved and we sat at home watching for the first time in quite some time. But we'll not get on about my personal pity party. <laughs> uh, not not quite yet. Anyway, this time for that, and when they don't book me for London. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, see, we will start off in positive ways of thinking this episode. Um, I don't think because we've got to keep talking about the YouTube thing because YouTube thing's very big. Uh, one slight issue I had with it is that the quality wasn't as good as MLG TV. But I and I don't know the background behind that. Someone said it's something to do with the compression they use. Higher bitrate, I heard, but... Is it bitrate? That's, that's what I heard on MLG. Well, I, TV, yeah. yeah, I'm very curious as to if that's going to be changed or upgraded, because I started yeah. watching on MLG. The problem being is that if you're on MLG, you're 16 seconds behind the YouTube stream. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was speaking to our producer at EGL, uh, Matt, and he was thinking it was something to do maybe with their encoder or their, or their bitrate or something like that, and it'll probably get sorted. You would think it would be something that would be paramount to the deal is that the quality is good, specifically with how uh, the mini the minimap was the biggest issue. I'm sure we'll get to the podcaster, so I'll probably not d- delve down that topic quite yet. But at the point of that... Oh, we'll but, get to the podcast. Oh, fuck, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the, it was the whole minimap thing was the most obscure thing to see. Everything else was okay, but like the quality was not what you would expect, really, was it? It, it should have been better. The quality on MLG was decent, but even then it wasn't amazing. Oh, no, I thought MLG was great. I, um, I, I, th- I don't good. know if it was just maybe the minimap wasn't great, and that was maybe my problem rather than the actual quality. Yeah, Maybe. Maybe the, but the, I mean, I'll tell you something, right? Still speaking about YouTube, there have been some positives after the event. They've talked about adding um, drops in, essentially. Uh, and obviously, this is, you know, <laughs> I did see a few people say, dumb. oh, welcome to eight years ago because yeah. uh, of Twitch doing it. But this is, you know, YouTube has not primarily been about this. It's now competition for Twitch, right? So they're not going to have everything from the off. It's not a dedicated broadcasting platform. Same way that if Twitch suddenly went to the YouTube route and, and you could upload videos to Twitch all the time, I'm sure they would have teething problems in the same sh- and wouldn't have everything that YouTube has. It's it's comparing two different things, right? You just you just don't go, oh, Ferrari made a phone, but doesn't you know you don't expect them to fucking nail it first time out. It's just it's just how it is. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. that, that, that's the thing, right? I think it's a positive move for for Call of Duty. Although we'll always discuss, you know, potential numbers on Twitch. Twitch is massively saturated in terms of esports and stuff at the moment. So, if people want to watch and they're genuine fans, then they they can find a place to watch. There's lots of social medias. I'm not going to be negative about that. Yeah, I don't know. The thing is, as well, one thing I want to note is the fact that they didn't um, brag about the value of this deal suggests that the deal was nowhere near as lucrative as it was just for the Overwatch League and Twitch alone for two years. And this involves seemingly all of Activision Blizzard's titles, you know. So that, that's one thing to keep in mind. Like they've packaged it all together. We don't know how long for, but it's said to be multi-year. So probably four, five, six, seven or something. And they yeah. haven't like been screaming it from the rooftops that it's a, it's a hundred million dollar deal or anything. So that's one thing I I kind of um, latched onto from the announcement. That's curious because now I'm wondering mm. like what because the deal is going to be big, right? There's no two ways about it. Activision have definitely gone with a big deal. And please bear in mind, right? But that deal has to go through so many layers because they have to tail the franchise teams. So, by the way, this is what we're getting for our streaming rights for the next fucking five years Mm -hmm. because that's part of their rev share. That's part of where it all comes back to them as well. So they've got to be happy with it, that amount of money coming back over X amount of years. So it has to be a significant number. But how significant versus how compared to the Overwatch deal would it have to be for them not to announce me? It's really interesting because, especially if it's that long and that many games, like even if it's a hundred million, right? So t- take it as a hundred million for this this package they've sold to YouTube. Hypothetical, hypothetically, 
Would they announce that, bearing in mind that it's for multiple titles for X amount of years? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if I saw how many years it was. No, they didn't state it. Exactly. So if it's for five years, right? Technically, if Overwatch on itself got the same deal as Twitch, that would be 110 million or something along those lines. If it was the same deal as Twitch, right. if Activision have sold Overwatch and uh, Activ- uh, Call of Duty and the, these other titles to YouTube for five years for 100 million, they might not announce that because it's seen as a much less value, even though it's still a very big deal. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, th- I think part of it that lessens the, the value or potential value at least is the fact that it seems to be a, a more mutually beneficial deal than like the Twitch and, and, and Overwatch League one was because it involves the hosting and the infrastructure as well, you know, moving over to, to Google's hosting as opposed to using uh, Amazon's. So I think yeah. I think as a kind of, you like you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours on this deal. So it's not entirely just an, a, a, we'll pay 120 mil thing. It might be like, okay, we'll pay 70 and we'll do this for you and you do this for us, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually interviewing Fuis tomorrow, so I will try and get some answers on that, <laughs> by the way. So I will try and find out how long it is and stuff, but um, because it's not very clear at the moment, and obviously clarity is a great thing for all, so yeah. we can actually know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Certainly will. Uh, just quickly to welcome our other guest who's, who's got here. Thanks for turning up, Vortex. How are uh, you? Can you see us, yeah? Yeah, we can see you. All we right. can hear you. Spot on. I'm good. I've just been for a meal, so that's why I was late. That's ben, no all your winnings, were you? <laughs> commiseration meal <laughs> um all right just to just to catch you up we're currently talking about the the, the youtube deal uh, that, that's going down mm. um and we just got to talking about the the money for it and so on and so forth and i completely lost my train of thought uh <laughs> um so let's 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 move on from that for for just a second then and, and kind of move into to the rest of the league and stuff i think in terms of the the very first, the launch and so on and so forth, because they had a pre-show. We knew there was a pre-show coming. Uh, 45 minutes. Uh, it, it wasn't quite... Longer than 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot longer than 45 minutes. Also, it wasn't quite what I was expecting as well. Um, not saying it was bad, just different. I was expecting maybe like longer intros of the teams and stuff and, and more kind of laying out the year. And it, it seemed very rushed. There was lots of little segments, like constantly. You look away, you know, like, oh, shit, they've gone through something. <laughs> they've, not, they've gone through, and then, oh, we're back into ads. Um, so it was a little bit more – I don't know whether it was – they had so much to get through. They just sort of went, oh, we've got 45 minutes for pre-show, which turned into longer. Just shove this all in, um, and we'll try to get through it all. Because I think you could have two hours before the league started of them just covering everything. If you think about it, you've got 12 brand-new teams to cover, you know, and their subs. You've got to talk about the challenger teams. You've got to talk about the 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 way the the whole year is working, which has changed in the last month. You know, and that's just the surface level shit. That's nothing to do with prize pools, nothing to do with anything else. You know, that that is an awful lot to cover. We've had podcasts on here that have gone on for two hours, and, and well, I barely feel like we can get everything done. And we're not even, you know, a, a big franchise league. So what we don't did have they that cover? information. What did they cover? Oh yeah, Steve Wait. wouldn't have seen this, would he? I didn't. I was playing. <laughs> 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 so did was, just, it? was it just breaks most of the time or something? Uh, there, was, there was a significant amount of ads. I think that's what um, a, a lot of people... I think that was the first big criticism of the first day, was the ad break. Well, no, that was the second no, no, big no. criticism of the first day. Um, was this heavy ad break schedule? And I'm guessing, because these are... Here's the interesting thing. These these ads they've put in, they're embedded into the broadcast, essentially. like That is mm-hmm. part of what they are selling yeah. now, and clearly it means that that is revenue for the league for these yeah. ads. So I don't know if they had to hit a certain amount. Oh, well. it, 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 it felt like they had to hit a certain amount it, you know I, we, we've had conversations outside of this and we're sort of led to believe that this is not necessarily what we're going to see every single week uh, I don't know if it was maybe just you know first first big day let's make sure we hit all these ads etc 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 but I don't know I, I, I was expecting it in fairness I remember we were having the conversation you were like there's so many ads and I was like well yeah <laughs> yes there is and in, I honestly expected it. What was it like their own ads that they would have made deals from themselves? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I presume yeah. so. Yeah, something was... that ad block won't stop you from. Oh watching. yeah, no, no, no ad block stop. But that like, I, I actually missed the pre-show. Right, what happened was I, I, it was a busy week and I fell asleep at my desk. I woke up with drool on my laptop. Right, hundred percent true. I wake up, see the YouTube deal's been announced. Go onto YouTube, type in Call of Duty League, and then open it up the stream, and then there's an ad. <laughs> instantly that's the first thing i saw of this entire new franchise league i was just like okay this is going to be a sign of things to come and, and lo and behold it was you know uh, yeah it was basically the call of duty ad league 
is, is how I'm hmm. going to refer to it from now on. I think, I, I, I don't mind it. There, there is, uh, I don't want to put this in a negative way. <laughs> yeah, you do. I kind, of, I kind of know what's happening. And I was going to cover this at some point. Fuck it, I'll cover it now. Here's what is happening. If you are watching this, I'm going to tell you what is happening. Um, and I haven't been told this directly, but it's so fucking obvious to me. Yes, Bryce, the esports oracle himself. Go. <laughs> people, this this new franchise league and, and several other franchise leagues across esports. A lot of people are doing this now. They are going towards TV sports, and in America, that means things like the NFL. That couldn't have felt more like an NFL broadcast yeah. to me. Anything else I've ever seen in esports? I was gonna say, is it like a Super Bowl kind of thing? Yeah, and would it be a Spitfire episode without an NFL esports comparison by Alan Bryce? That's the question. Yeah, but I'm, I think that's the worst part. I think the worst part of the NFL is the way they broadcast it. Mm. That's it's very difficult because because of the frequent breaks and the way it downs and there are, it's heavy with the ad breaks. It's very choppy. They go back and forth with various bits, very ad heavy, and ov- and obviously that is is what's happening here. Now I don't know if it's going to be good or bad for the future of it because that is a digestible content that people are very much used to in America. If you if you're from the UK or Europe and you go and watch an NFL game, you'll know exactly what I mean very, very quickly. Right? It takes forever. There's lots of chopping and changing. They have these very big sponsored ad breaks and it works, right? The NFL was a very, very successful league in terms of money. So you can't hate that. It's just maybe a little bit galling straight out of the gate. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, but you get used to it, and then they'll keep getting the money. So I mean, really, they don't care. And yeah, that, that, that's another <laughs> they, thing as well. If you're in America, you're probably used to this level of like. I think it's because like as a British person, we're probably not. Well, as we've got the BBC, to, aren't we? It, well, <laughs> yeah. It, you, <laughs> I have to explain more context now. So, so the UK versus US thing—that's another piece of context. If you ever watch the video about why ads in the UK and the US are so different. No. It's a legal thing. It's illegal. You can't do it in the UK. Like you can't have, um, like, take news articles, right? You can't have any news brought to you by uh, advertisers. It's not allowed. You're not allowed to be uh, unsubtle in TV programs and stuff in the UK. Yeah, it, it's it's just not. It's against the law. So you know when the because uh, um, I did this, I did this when I went to UMG, right? And they were like, right, you've got to do this section presented by X, and I'm like, cool, and I'm like, right. But if you watch the UK, that doesn't happen. You don't get that in UK broadcasts, right? It's not allowed. So it is a culture difference between the US and the UK. So for us, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different in terms of like digesting that, and you have to accept that it is a culture thing. Well, what's going to happen when they come to London then? Or does it not matter? It'll be no, the same matter. broadcast. But I think I think they get across it because it's international. I don't really know. I don't think it'll point, actually. <laughs> oh. Everyone will be too drunk in the UK to notice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll probably be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, though. And, I mean, uh, like, seeing, like, the US Air Force present segments is, is a very strange thing. I don't think that'll ever be, like, seem commonplace, especially in a Call of Duty thing, uh, Call of Duty broadcast. And, 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 yeah, but, like, we saw the same kind of partners coming back, so I think that kind of helped it a little bit. If it was entirely new partners instead of your Scuffs and your Astros and such, mm-hmm. then it'd probably be even more jarring and even more alienating than, than it was, you know? Yeah. Yeah, someone's uh, just put in the chat um, about it's British broadcasting, not online streaming. So we should it should be the same show. Um, but if you're ever wondering, like if you are, you know, from UK or Europe and sitting and oh, this was very different to what I'm used to digesting as content. That's why, right? That's that's the reason why. Um, but I don't know. There were a lot of ads. There were a lot of there were a lot of going to the death segments and then cutting away to the ad breaks and then coming back and then going away and coming back, um, which seemed to me a little bit less slick than the way MLG did it. And I don't know if it's like again I said because it's teething issues, new production team, all this sort of shit going down. Um, I don't. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it pans out for the rest of the year. I assume it'll get better. I know people on Twitter were like, "Oh, we'll get for it," and we've had people like Maven come out and say, "Don't worry, things are being looked at. We're changing stuff," and you'd, you'd hope so. But he also expressed the fact that he he um, had told them not to do so many of these shit things before, and then they hadn't listened, <laughs> and they had to wait until the the viewers affirmed that that he was telling the truth and he actually knew what he was on about before they actually made any changes. So that shows a complete lack of lack of faith in the people that did end up bringing back, you know, the people who are the senior figures around Call of Duty esports. Hey, Clint can do what he wants, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually Clint's idea. He's Clint's domination in this game, just so we're clear. Um, 
but no, so, see, that's the interesting thing, right, Adam? And, and I, I don't know how much you watch of this, Steve, because I imagine you were... Uh, yeah, I was, playing. I was playing a lot, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit, and you can tell us, talk us through the uh, the challenger bracket, because that was the first thing on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> that it was blown out of proportion by a fucking ton. A picture. <laughs> the garage. Yeah. But here's, here's the thing, right? So we're talking about... Let's move on and talk about the podcasting. That first fucking map. That was bad. I've seen that. That was bad, that. Wait, right, really I, I'm going to preface. When I first seen when we were loading in and how clean it was, that's when I tweeted, oh, the Codcaster looks great. Because for me, yeah, for me, for me, I thought it looked good. And then, then they started the map and everyone was like, are you fucking stupid? What's going on? You didn't let you go tweet, did you? Did you, just, no, did you like... no, I caught retweeted it. I was like, I, I said this before we started switching cameras I, every five seconds. I was like, shit, I have railroaded myself. Every single this. time the hill ro- was rotating, they were, you were, we were getting a new view of the hill. Oh, and missed every single rotation. Like the gunfights in every single rotation. The, f- the really first bad. map was so bad. I know you're going to delve into the conversation, but it did thankfully get better. <laughs> I didn't really oh, see that much more for that. Oh, it's like they hired, is they, I think they hired the observers from the Star Ladder major in Berlin, the CSGO event, uh, because that had just as bad um, observing throughout, but they also did fix it as, as it goes on, you know. I just don't know what goes through the red when they see that shit. They're like, oh, we're innovating. But it's like, yeah, but you're innovating poorly, so it's not actually a fucking good thing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's changing it's the, the wrong thing. shit, man. It's mm-hmm. the same thing as I was mentioning a minute ago. The reason this changes is there are new people involved and they're going towards a different style of broadcasting. It's, it's different people. They're, they're going the same route yeah. as TV stuff. They're trying to broadcast it in a different way. And I understand that because, and this is another thing, right? There's always this old adage is that uh, people are talking about, why do you do this? Oh, you know, it's how we've always done it. And that seems a bad thing, right? Because you should always be challenging it and doing new stuff and, and seeing if it goes through. The opposite is true. Don't try and check. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Mm-hmm. Both of those things in balance. But people tend to use whichever one they think is best at the time. So they're going, right, we need to change this. Let's just see if we can get it cool. Let's, 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 it looked more like Overwatch, you know, with all the people jumping about and, and, the, and the broadcast coming in. Of course, in Call of Duty, there has to be a certain amount of situational awareness. Um, and the viewer has to get that situational awareness. So they look at the minimap. They figure out how that... The, the rotation is being broken. The cast are talking about that and they're looking at the point of view. For me, I end up talking about, I end up looking at the mini map for most of the fucking game. Yeah. Casting, watching, whatever. It's more important to me. Um, and that, <laughs> and that wasn't there half the time. They just need to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. Like that's, we've always had the right stuff on the screen. Just, it just doesn't look like, like, I haven't got it right, like the size of stuff and everything. Like, yeah, Black, yeah. Up, Black Ops 2 had it like really well, but then they had like to see the mini map, you had to fucking lose half the page, yeah, like shit like that. So, I, I know a lot of people were talking about the stats, and I, I don't think not seeing them at all is any good. I, I agree with that, but I think it was a conversation we had with Maven, and I don't know if he said this on stream or off, but it was more of a like a so when you watch. And this is just like you know, obviously an example. If you watch like see see say we're watching football on BT or Sky or something like yeah. that, they will have a shitload more information than we do on our screen. Obviously, with statistics, that sort of thing. As a viewer, typically, and I'm just saying this like I know we shouldn't be copying sports and that sort of thing. We will get in that conversation, but not all the time. You don't in in anything else apart from esports, you do not get to see the how many correct passes Deli Ali's made or. If you're watching the basketball, how many blocks LeBron James made, unless they bring it up. And it's like the main statistics <laughs> that you get to see when you are watching something like that is the score. And that's all you need to know. And I think the theory behind it, if I remember rightly, was to get viewers away this connotation of kills means you're doing well. Yeah. Which I and, get. And that's fine. Which that's I'm fine. fine with. But the fact that we've seen no stats whatsoever through the first map was a bit like, I, I didn't mind it as it went on, that we were dropping them down occasionally and you were seeing how people were doing. That's good. But then there was a few people saying, well, some of the time when you can get hyped around a broadcast is if somebody is doing really, really well. Yeah, and then you just watch, sit and watch them. and then Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm sort of split on it. I'm it's split a little can, bit can, on the can the, can the observer see who's doing well? Well, yeah, yeah. Not... Like That's the thing. The casters have got, like we were speaking to Phil and Miles, they had like a full screen for the minimap. They had all the stats up on another screen, you know, obviously this has been run through PC, so you can have like so much yeah. more there. And they have the information to then 
tell the viewer if they feel it's relevant which which i'm all for but then everyone like all the stats guys lion man and everyone they were out of a job they couldn't see shit and it was yeah. hilarious at the first but i think that um that easy mac was doing yeah that's through the kill feed yeah which is so, so bryce you said that um the people the high ups the new people that have come in will want these changes right because they think yeah. um to, to increase the viewership right but like the, the problem with COD, in my opinion, at least, is like getting the new viewers. We've always had a problem with acquiring these new viewers as opposed to keep retaining them. So like having uh, like the scoreboard and stuff on, on the broadcast is not going to stop people from watching if they're new to it. It, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense in terms of like, oh, we need more viewership. So we change the way that we, we observe and we change the, 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 the minimap, for example, or we change any of those things. That's not, that's not going to do it. So it's, it's almost antithetical that they get rid of the helpful parts in an effort to get more viewership. It doesn't make any sense for them. So it seems like to me they've just changed it for the fucking sake of it. Um, so here's, here's how I'm going to unpack this because I thought Tan said some stuff there that was just it irritated me. Um, <laughs> and I'll explain, I'll explain why. Um, so I understand both sides of this conversation, but I think there are pros and cons to this. I understand, right, about keeping the Cogcaster more clean, more slick, etc. But I think it realistically comes down to is how you digest information on screen. Now, what they're talking about in terms of stats being up when you require them is an interesting point. However, this isn't the NBA. This isn't uh, several other things because a Call of Duty game, especially something like Hardpoint, is incredibly fast. It is unbelievably fast. By well, the time you're halfway into the Hardpoint rotation, uh, you're already looking for the next one. There are very few relevant times to bring up more in-depth stats. More in-depth stats like, for instance, uh, trades. Nobody ever talks about this. No, we don't ever see stats for it. We never know how people are trading. We just see KD. And I can understand moving away from the KD as a metric, right? Take Waskins, for instance, right? I don't know how many of his 1.6 KD were trades that were baited out for him by Dylan and Jed. That's I don't true. know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that. And it means that the KD is not an accurate metric to break everything down. So I can understand why they would move away from it. My issue is is that you're never going to bring that into a, in, into a broadcast, right? There's no time for it most of the time. S&D, potentially. You mm -hmm. can bring up first bloods. You can bring up this other stuff. But that has to have somebody in the background bringing it and feeding it to the casters. It's, it's more to do in 10 minutes. Also, in terms of tidying up the CODcast screen, having the big faces up there, right? Definitely better than the operators. 100%. Yeah. Never want to see operators in Call of Duty again. Just want to see the symbols. I don't care about what they look like. I don't. I, I couldn't give a shit. I just want to see what... They, if, if we're doing specialists for the next game or whatever it is, okay, I'll see the abilities up there. Fantastic. I can tell what that ability is when I look at it. But don't give a shit about that, you know, that character's face. I just think when the scoreboard was up, and it may be just the way I've always broken it down, it's easier for me to see who's alive and who's dead in a column than it is to look across the entire screen. I agree. It was quite difficult at times in S and D to figure out who was left alive. Yeah. Occasion. I mean, you could look, but it it, it was you had to like. Yeah, no, I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't want to gray out. Yeah. I don't want to gray out. I want a big red X. Big red. He's fucking dead. Yeah. 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 I want that gone. I want that gone. Um. So I understand both sides of that argument. I just think that the scoreboard is something that's always been there. You can kind of tell how people are doing interactions and wise. You can look at it, and I can see it both ways. I, I don't think it's the most galling part of it. I think the galling part is that third person thing they kept doing. And we saw some casters tweet out saying, by the way, this isn't the observer's choice. They've been told to do this. This was, yeah. that, was that was actually tweeted out. I don't out. want anyone blaming Paradox or any of that shit. He that, that was tweeted out. And I knew that was going to happen. Um, like I said, because it's the same old thing. We need to change something to see if we can do it. But like I said, the problem with Call of Duty is you need that certain situational awareness. You need to be able to see what's coming. The minimap was too translucent. I think because yeah, and, and obviously the it wasn't as bright as it could have been which means that depending on where that player is and the textures around that player it's hard to see the minimap I yeah, don't, it, needs I, see, it needs its own spot like with a better background color yeah, yeah possibly but i just think it did it was a little bit better as time went on i think they brightened it up a little bit it was a little bit opaque at first wasn't it but i think i feel like they did unless i was just Maybe I mean, concentrate like more. I, say, I, don't I only know, really but... watched the first series, so I'm just going off that. Yeah, I don't. You don't. You don't. Don't need to jump in, Steve. Don't worry. 
fine. But like, uh, <laughs> I, I think it got better. It did, did get better. better. I, I, I don't know if I was just saying that, but I, I, I tweeted out saying I think it's better, and everyone was like, I think so. And then Miles was like, Yeah, yeah, it's definitely better. I've seen so, people tweeting out saying the quality wasn't. Too yeah, good. well, that was the whole YouTube conversation we, we had before was that it wasn't great, but probably will get better. Time goes on, I think. That fish. Yeah, I think that's something they're going to work on, right? Yeah, you would hope. Um, you would fucking hope so. To be what, what else? I mean, apart from the fact that it was that first map was the worst map of Call of Duty I've ever seen in my life. And please, because I had, there was people tweeting about it online, right? And uh, I think I replied to Red Eye. And he said, "Is am I am I the only one struggling? I went, no, no, no. Like, tunnel know this. We've been casting this game before there was even a fucking mini-map. Like, mm-hmm. we used to cast this in spectator mode <laughs> with no mini-map. And if you wanted to change teams, we had to come out of it, change teams manually, and go back into it. We didn't have we didn't have information or nothing. We just had to know the game really fucking well uh, to guess where people were, right? Mm-hmm. And I could follow that a decade ago better than I could that map. Yeah, it was impossible. It was impossible. impossible. You got on, on hard points, right? And I've said this to um, in not nice ways because I have been a, a bit blunt with observers in the past. If you don't catch my rotations, um, then you're fucking useless. Like, I don't want to watch the old hill. Like, if I'm watching some guy on the old hill, I'm fucking annoyed. I just need to see the rotation battles. They're so much bigger, and, and the, the fans deserve to know how crucial that one kill is rather than the 30 seconds of bullshit trading we've just watched. There are big, big things happening on the minimap. We need to see them. Um, and that's and that's where it gets taken away from. But I don't know. It, it was interesting interesting to see it done a little bit differently. And I don't think it's a terrible thing. Like, there are sky cams you can use. S&D yeah. has these great things for sky cams. The respawns are a little bit different. There's too much happening a lot of the time. Also, experimenting on the very first series isn't the brightest idea either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's the opposite way it should Dude, be done. Chicago v. Dallas, first map of the CDL. Let's fuck everybody's shit up. <laughs> like, yeah, it it, it makes like, yeah, very little sense. Like, this is the first impression we're ever going to get of this league. Like, there's going to be more hype on it than, than, than normal. I know, I'm, let's, let's fuck my, it up. I, I know people who are listening will not see this, but my face watching that, I was just like, what, where are we? Where are we going? Like, it was just so... And I know it's like... I think when you're casting it, sometimes it is easy to follow because when you're speaking it... it, it I don't know, I think... It, Pricey, you probably know what you're looking for at that point. Well, yeah, think- exactly. But then I think when you were sitting there watching it, and I was just like, I don't know where they're going. Like, where, why, why are we here already? We'd ro- we'd went with like a like a, a sky cam on the rotation, but there was nobody even like rotated yet, like yeah. there. So we were literally just sad. staring at a hill, and it was just like, <laughs> they, 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 I will say it it vastly improved as the weekend went on, and I think by the end of the weekend. It was actually decent. Like there was a couple of little ones here and there, and I think it actually brings me onto my biggest issue with it was is that when you were doing these sky cam shots or these th- third person shots, the minimap completely disappeared. So <laughs> I didn't have a clue who was winning the rotation, other than what was on my screen, which wasn't really the rotation. It was mostly just staring at a point in the hill. So I think if they are going to do these, they need to make sure that the minimap actually stays there as well. So I can yeah. understand what's going on on other bits of the map whilst I'm watching this rather pointless bit of information. Yeah, I don't, no, I, I, don't, I don't get why the what the purpose is of the third person. Like I really don't. I get the sky cam a bit in some situations, but it's what's thematic. the point of watching someone in third person? Not you can't even see if they're shooting straight yeah. or not. Call of Duty is a first person shooter. We should be watching in first person at all. Because you, you can't get it... Like, if somebody shits on somebody in third person, you can't really tell that can't much tell. unless it's, like, a complete, like, ridiculous turn on. But you can't See, here's really the thing. tell. I'm not mad about the third person or the sky cam. It doesn't bother me. Neither of those things bother me. The fact that the minimap disappears while it happens, so I, I lose all situational well, yeah, that, awareness. That does. was my biggest issue. That was was my biggest issue. I get oh great, I can see four guys on here. I have no idea if the flanks fucking open, but I can see four guys on my screen. They look like having a grand old time. Could, anything could be happening. I don't know if someone's rotating. I don't know if the pinch is coming in. Yeah. I don't know the context of why they're waiting. Uh, Brody like, saying I, in the chat that minimap uh, numbers needed. I, I agree. It's always been the case that we always need those. I'd imagine that'll come in. I don't mm-hmm. think that's something that's difficult for them to... Um, I didn't even notice they were gone because the minimap kept disappearing so often to begin with. You, you couldn't even see player names in the kill feed half the time as well. If you're like on, if you're London Royal Ravens, for example, yeah. you couldn't even see who was getting the kills. So again, like, and then apparently those colours were fixed or something, so they couldn't change them until the next event. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. They're locked. <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's a team contract thing. Same with they all, look, one of the positives. I really like the team camos. I thought that was great. Bit late. 
you could be promoting that if they were in the game like two, <laughs> three, four weeks earlier. <laughs> in fairness, that. a lot earlier than usual. <laughs> yeah, a lot earlier than usual. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Well, we're in January. It's almost February, man. And I, I know, like I they're supposed to be advertising the shit when the game first comes out. They should have the shit sorted. It's we haven't got league play yet. Exactly. Like, how can I aspire to be one of these guys if I, if I have to go to a fucking pub match or school? Well, yep. I've got a school based matchmaker. To be fair, it's basically the same fucking thing. But the, the, the positive to take out all of this, right? for the podcast is from what I understand and the tweets that I've seen come out, there are going to be alterations behind the scenes because is, as much as it, a lot of people are having a lot of fun shitting on Call of Duty League, right? And you know who you are on Twitter. I've seen these people who fucking just, who are gleefully like, yeah, smiling. fuck it. I'm like, yeah, Adam, I'm talking about you as well. Fuck you. Let's go for it, mate. I'm a cold guy. I've followed it for 12 years. I love it. I want yeah, it to yeah. be fucking good. That's why I'm critiquing. I, I, you're, you see, the thing, that's the difference, right? Between your critique and somebody else's. Your critique comes from a place of his legitimate concerns about it. I'm right. talking about the people on, on Twitter who are basically sitting there hard if the slightest thing is wrong with a broadcast, right? These these people are going, oh, yeah, fuck you, you're going to fail. I'm like, fucking hell, dude, the color's wrong on the broadcast. <laughs> can slow down. Because this shit will change. Because there are obviously there are a lot of people invested in this league, not just financially. I'm talking about the people behind it who want to see it succeed. Mm-hmm. That won't stand. There's not going to be somebody at Activision going, nah, fuck them. We'll keep the minimap as it is. <laughs> right? This is not going to happen. Someone's going to go, right, how do we fix this? We'll see a patch come out in the future. It'll change the way the broadcast is working. Because we know all the important people, you know, the, the casters and everybody from behind the camera and up the chain, the, the management, have all gone, yeah, that could be better. And that's going to be something that they will look to patch because they want to make it a good experience. The same reason that the observing changed very rapidly throughout the weekend. It went from, here we go, the first map, and then the second second map changed instantly, right? Somebody clearly got another uh, tap on the shoulder and went, yeah, yeah, cut a lot of that out. <laughs> Let's do less of that for now. Um, and that will have been meetings and going on behind it. So I'm not worried. I think, obviously, we're talking about the negatives of Codcast to begin with, but like I said there are some positives here. The player faces in-game is a nice touch. Yeah. I don't always need them, myself personally, but it's yeah. nice to put a face to a name. I don't think it needs to be on the screen twice. That whatever that three thing was, where you see the the players on stage, the face cams, and the. Well, uh, I wasn't even referring to that. I was more referring to so they had it at the top, yeah, for each yeah. player, and then on the player card in the bottom right when you were viewing them, it had their face there as well. Didn't I it? think that's better, me. Yeah, well, just, I think it just be like that. There. Yeah, I don't think you need that big bar at the top. I don't think it needs to be there. Something like it, be there. talking about taking the information away, that wouldn't be. I wouldn't be terribly mad at that information going away and just gray, uh, reading it out. Maybe leaving the the stats on a small little stat block. That would be nice. Or or having the names at the top and then the stats at the bottom right. Have you I, seen or the faces at the top, whatever. Like I, I I just don't think it needs to be in there twice. Did you see Lion Man's tweet? Because he he did an overlay at the start of the game and actually did look much better than. It was yeah. a bit it's a bit cluttered, but it looked the, better. The than... thing the thing is with all these like, and I I like Lion Man as well, but I think you know people who make these online. It's like, yeah, it's, it's all very well hard. thrown in Photoshop. It's not just that simple, though. It's like, yeah, one thing's looking well. It has to function fucking well. It's, as well yeah, exactly. Actually provide yeah. everything it needs to. So, yeah, wishful thinking, that's cool. And, like, it gets yeah, some, look, like, in, you get some kudos be, and yeah. some likes. But, I mean, yeah, at the exactly, end of the day, that's... he's not being roped in to do it. He ain't being hired to do it. So, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, like, I, I appreciate the, the artwork that comes out from Lion Man. Um, but I will say this. It's great to be creative when you got your your only boss and Twitter's you, where you're going to put it out. I went, mm-hmm. trust me, those designers working on this game are working in the most narrow fucking box of you will do it this way without this and it's got to be in this pixel and it can't be anything else and we've got yeah. to get approved. If you mess up a fucking logo or there's a space for a logo or one of those things, you're in fucking trouble because that is going to go up the marketing and somebody's going to go, what the hell is this? And it'll look like the biggest thing in the world. And it's your job, right? You have to work in a narrow margin. I've seen it happen before, right? Everybody who's worked, you know, uh, for a living has known that sometimes you've got to do something in the most narrow margins possible. And you can't go, fuck it. I'll, I'll do the fries from across the room. I'll just fling them in the fryer. It'll be great, right? It's, you know, you've got to do it this way in these rules. This is how all this shit applies to design as well. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't really care about the um. I put. I'm gonna put in this this chat. But I don't really care about the, f- the like the fonts and the artwork and stuff. But just like the layout of where stuff is, I think is much better. Like than having them two, them the faces at the top. I just don't think they're necessary. No, I agree with that. I I I can agree with that. I think it's obviously something they're doing. They want to get these faces out there. Yeah. Um. But oh, I will t- one last thing. One last thing. We talk about the cold caster, right? The uh, the saturation could be upped. Yeah, I agree. It was a bit grey. 
Yeah, a little bit grey. A bit grey. Yeah. That's it. Sound. <laughs> but I mean, like, I, one, one thing I will say is I don't think it's good having a league on a game that's not great to watch. And I didn't really enjoy watching the game too much myself. I know people will vary from that. But I mean, I think that's the foundation of having a good competition is the game being good, you know, that you're actually competing on. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. I, uh, I, I, can, I, I can see that. I think the other thing, the last thing, and then this is a, a, another criticism of, of, of it now. So um, can we kind of knew this going in, but domination? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of domination uh, as a thing. Uh, the reason, the it's reason in the it's in the same It's the same thing, right? It is the most played game mode. Unfortunately, these people aren't playing it to win most of the time. <laughs> um, have you ever gone and played a public game of it? They aren't playing it to win. It's just a great vehicle for TDM. I yeah. can't believe they fucked the rules, man. I can't believe uh, it. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, but that was that was an accident, right? That was like yeah, they, one, one day before on an event, man. Plus, because that threw me off watching. I, I kept forgetting about that rule, and I was like. Why the fuck are the other players pushing out the dom point? Yeah. Only one guy. I was like, oh, that's why. The keepers, the everybody keeps pushing, running yeah. past it. Yeah, and they and they brought neutral in a day before, like which, which I'm for. Ne- but ne- ne- neutral not... class, but it changes the game. I've, I've just I was playing a map for top six. Uh, we were two 0 up against Spoof's team, Seattle Academy, and and we we go down fifty points at the half because they're just running into one like home flag that no one normally ever goes to cap and neutral in it. We were just like, what the fuck are we supposed to do here? And then we nearly made the nuttiest comeback I've ever seen. Like, but it's just, it's just dumb. Like, how can they change stuff like that a day before an event? I mean, I mean it happens every year, so I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> I think they try to make positive changes. Um, and apart from the fact that obviously that happened, you know, the, the the one man thing, I didn't mind the changes. Like I said, it's it's a difficult thing to get right. Domination. I've all, I said this when we last watched Domination in in Call of Duty, right? When it was the third game mode, the po- the problem with that game mode is is you have you spend the years to do fucking math constantly because it's three points per tick per five seconds and they have to work that out constantly yeah. as it's going on. You're wondering whether or not you're getting the tick and it splits up the the action, right? A caster can't follow one guy and see the setup around him because those other two players might be on the other side of the map. That's another complete different set of interactions yeah. for a different part of control. There's 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 too many layers to it to make good viewing or talk about strategy, especially on some of these maps where it's fucking mental and the chaos spawns are going yeah. on. You're like, I don't know where the fuck anyone is spawning. They've got two over here, two over here. They've got C neutralized, B's being captured. Who the fuck knows how this yeah. is going to play out? Because it's not a strategy right now. It's fucking TDM with things in the way. So I did, I'll maybe caveat this with something from Gears surprisingly so it's a very similar mode in gears of war if anybody in the chat watches it you'll know what i'm talking about with escalation it's like somebody three watches points. gears these spots yeah, apparently uh so <laughs> so when there's three different points and it's the same as domination you're going to be in the point but then when you have control of it to certain points or whatever it comes up with cog team win in 120 seconds if it stays this way like something like that would definitely help. I'm not saying to fix domination, but you feel as if there's something in the UI that they could then develop to say, well, if these got a hold of it, surely we can bring it up on screen to say, this team wins in this amount of seconds if they hold this two cap. This team wins in this amount of seconds if they lose this, uh, if they hold a one cap, et cetera, et cetera. Something like that could be introduced. I was just using Gears as a good example, surprisingly, of, of how they do it. And it comes up on screen and like, it's so easy to follow because you know who's going to win if it stays this way. And then I'll tell you something else that's bad on. with it now. The, the uh, bringing in the neutral. So like they brought in the keeping the progression on the flags, yeah. So that like if you die on a flag, if you've capped, like if you say you've half capped it, you keep that until they jump on it and get it down. Yeah, yeah. But na- now neutral ends on it. If you jump on a flag for two, three seconds, and then die, but it's a shit time to jump it. But you just you just jump it for them three seconds because you can. You're actually putting your team in a good spot. Even like you can't punish people for jumping flags at the wrong time because you. Because they're bumping, bumping it up. up. Yeah. yeah. No, so yeah, you I think, think it needs dumb. to be like need, a, a little be one of the time. It needs like... to be one or the other, like neutral in or, or holding your progression. Yeah, I get what you mean. Because then it, you, the, the enemy team could be so far away, yeah. but yet then you've got to go all the way down, neutral, all the way up. Yeah. So it yeah. means you can be aggressive and trade the flag out, right? Like you don't yeah. have to wait for a three stack, especially because it's a single person. Anyway, you can keep jumping that shit. Um, what, but, would you, what would you bring in in place of, uh, of Dom? That's, 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 the, that's the, the ultimate fucking oh. question. Oh. <laughs> like, All right, another S and D man at this point. It's mm. too late. Just turn it to CS:GO without it's, the economy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's too late to try CTF now. I think it's 
Well, CT- oh, mate, I, wasn't I got it tried? About CTF. Wasn't it tried? I think, I think it, it was, but it won't, it. it won't work. CTF won't work on this game, unfortunately. But I, I saw this in the... And I, sorry to cut you off there, Steve. But I'm right. of, fucking the tweets I saw this weekend about it irritate me. Because CTF, right, is a very nuanced game mode, if you understand it. It will not work properly in 5v5 for the majority of it. But it, the reason CTF can be good or bad on any single game is very, very fucking simple. It is to do with spawn manipulation and the maps. If if they don't work for it, as it hasn't in some games, you need you go back to look. You go back to look at Black Ops Two for this, right? You need to have the flag in a decent location where you can push one side, and a mid map control has to be paramount in any CTF. If the strategy on a map with CTF isn't that mid-map control is the most important thing for both teams, it will not work. We saw back in, uh, was it AW or where, was it AW? No, it wasn't AW. Fucking IW, I think it was, where, you, you know, pl- letting a player sit back was a good strategy, right? Black Ops 3. Nah, Black, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 3 yeah. Yeah, Black Ops 3. So I'm getting you had, you had Mar- Marky, Marky B back strong. Talk about the Marky B strategy. Right? <laughs> Go on, lad. That's one. That, that should never happen, right? And the reason for that is spawn manipulation. He should be punished for being back there by forcing his team out towards the cut, right? His, his team should be pushed out and spawn the other way away, and the other team should be able to hold the cut because players should have to have a realistic expectation of if they're close to our flag, we probably need to push the overextend and try to fight it or either trade back or do something. Or if we can sort of hold it, we can rotate back. But it has to be a viable decision. A lot of the times in those games, the map actually means rotating back is always the best thing to do. And if that happens, it's shit. Right? Yeah. That's why CTF becomes bad. Spawn manipulation and the way the maps are made. If, if it's, if, cause we, I think it was Arden's, right? I think it was Maven who said he hated Arden's Forest the most. And you can see it in the map. The flag... Is in a terrible position. It's at a choke point. It's way back. You know, even if you get pushed out of it, right, you can actually come back and still watch the flag from that angle. It's terrible. Well, Arden's Forest, you just get yeah. the flashbacks, man. It, does, it doesn't work in that way. And CDF in this game, especially in 5v5, it's not going to be as effective. There's too many people on the map to get that flag away. It's a nuanced game, CTF. Control would have been fine. Control, anyway. <laughs> control would have been fine. What, what other modes yeah, could we actually, use though that why, we have? Free for all. Why couldn't we try control? That, <laughs> but I think I, control was class. I thought control was decent. Yeah, I know last you year. think control was class. I saw your <laughs> game at a jam. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck. I tell you, who didn't a, think control was class. <laughs> Splice. Yeah. Uh, from from what I've seen, a lot of non COD people who tuned in, they seem to think like Oplink Plink from like a few years ago. They seem to think yeah, that was good watch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Like yeah. fundamentally, it's not going to work. Like you're not just going to see someone like yeah. Dolphin dive in. <laughs> but the, the, the other tried thing it on World War Two at the start. That was a slow it game in general. It wasn't, though. Too, it wasn't yeah. too bad, but CTF was probably better. Even yeah. with um, demolition. Even with... <laughs> I want sabotage. Oh, oh. Or styling. Oh. No, no, not sabotage. Not sabotage. <laughs> it would still um, be there now. <laughs> the, the reason, even see, even because I was about to criticize Dom for something, but I think even Uplink had a, a little bit of it. There aren't very many game modes in Quadri where you can't come back, right? Like. In S&D, you can come back from just about anything. Hardpoint, you can come back. We've seen it. Dom, that game can physically be over (laughs) very early on. And there's not a lot to talk about then because the game doesn't end. It doesn't end. Like, maybe if they had something up saying triple cap or whatever, or this is how many seconds, like, just end the game. There should be, I'd like to see a hard limit, like something flashing coming on the screen saying they are about to lose this game in 15 seconds if they don't do this. Rather, because the cast have to figure that out and then go for it. Yeah, well, what are people in the chat talking about Infected? You know, I genuinely have not played it, so I don't know how it works. <laughs> like, uh, I know it's just a it's public a game. Troll. It's a troll. No, 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 no. There's a few people saying Infected would be fun. What, what are we no, saying? It's a troll. What is it? Well, some Mike Myers. Get that going. It, it, Old school it, mode. You don't know what Infected is? I mean, well, I played you, it in like previous games, but I don't know if it's the same like in terms uh, you of... You all this. spawn up and then one person's on and has to knife people. And yeah, then my Myers. you get infected. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. You see, I'm thinking like, did, did this not come in? Like, did somebody not suggest this at the beginning of the game and a genuine like no joke? I hope no. not. No, no chance. Right, so it's not a team game mode? No. Right, no, okay. it's, my, it's, it's not my, Myers. It's a free for all. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Is it? Is it not like in... in no, I'm sure it's different. I'm, Easy Mac is backing me up here. I'm sure it's... Yeah, he don't know what he's on. He don't know Cod at all. Easy Mac. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, is it, 
Infected, right, okay. Infected CTF. Don't let right, anyone okay. ever accuse you of not knowing anything about COD, Tun. Don't <laughs> ever let like, anybody well, say it. this is what I'm right? saying. Like, Let's have Infected as a third game mode. We've fuck. ruined the podcast no, credibility is, now. No, I'm not saying it should be. I'm saying Here that I am explaining high-level reasons why CTF doesn't work and its mechanics, and you're sitting there telling me we should lose sit with fucking Infected. People are backing me up in the chat here. To be it's fair, we may as well at this point. Talking about. It's not the same as what we're talking about. Not what you play in private match where one kid... You remember COD 4 used to run around with a shotgun? It's not the same as Mike Myers. It's different. <laughs> but it's reverse well, you're CTF. Mike Myers. Team Mike Myers. Yeah, let the other yeah, team run it. away. Do that as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Old school mode, like hopping up on Crash. I'd, I'd watch that. I'd, yes, I'd pay to watch that. So it sounds like it's it's like Blitz, but you have to bring your flag back to their base. Okay, that probably won't work. Fuck that. Yeah, that okay. How good. complicated do we want to get it, man? Yeah, I, right. I'm just glad nobody suggested Blitz because I still think that's one of the worst game modes I've ever had. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no, nobody, nobody was biting, unfortunately. No, Blitz is terrible. Blitz is awful. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on from that because uh, there is something we want to talk about next. Uh, power rankings. So I saw the yeah. the ESPN, uh, like the esports side, has released power rankings. Uh, people taking some objective with it. So here's the power rankings for uh, them after the Minnesota event, right? And there I'll are get the link. I'll get them. Um, it's Atlanta Phase, Chicago Huntsman, Minnesota Rocker. Uh, Paris Legion, Dallas Empire, uh, LA Gorillas, London Royal Ravens, Toronto Ultra, Florida Mutineers, Seattle Surge, New York Subliners, and then Optic Gaming LA at the very bottom. Um, here's my issue, right? So the first power rankings that come out were based on fuck all, <laughs> right? The mm-hmm. before, before the event, they were based on nothing. I mean, now, we, we struggle to predict two everything. games with incredibly different schedules. Yeah. Right, another power rankings has come out. These power rankings right now don't mean very much. Yes, we could probably say the Atlanta face are one of the strongest teams. Fine with that, but like Dallas Empire obviously didn't win anything. Super hard bracket, but we now don't know because they've played what we think are the two best teams. They could be the they could, best they team. could be twelfth, right? They're probably not, right? But Dallas Empire could be the worst team in the league. Mm. We just have no way of verifying it because they haven't played the other fucking nine teams. Me, me and just speaking of him in the chat, Easy, Easy Mac, we're having this conversation. He put out a poll saying, who do you think like failed the most this weekend? And people mostly voted Dallas. I was like, Fuck, you look fucking twisted. Nah. You say who they played. Like, I'm sure if they played like, what, like New York and maybe like London or somebody, then it would have been potentially very, very different. And that's not me putting those two down, just an example. But like, it, the record could have been very, very different. Did they New were York playing... win a series? No. Uh, who did they no. lose to? A... They lost to London and they lost to Toronto. Uh, no, no. Did they not lose to Face Atlanta because they got smoked? Um, yes, yes, actually team. it was, yeah. yeah Subliners, yeah. The, the thing is, like, as you say, it's kind of asinine to have these. It's kind of pointless because no one knows what's going on. Just yeah. so opinion the rankings. It's, it's, it's absolutely bollocks. And the thing is, it's ESPN. Like, yeah, they know League. They know Korean League and, and Chinese League of Legends. That's about it. They don't know fucking Call of Duty. And, and Arda, the guy who did know, had to run off because his missus was having a kid. Like, they left it to Emily. Emily Rand, no offence, but she even said it herself. One of her goals for 2020 is to get to know COD better because she doesn't know it that well. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth really putting your energy into what they've come up with as you say like you we know we know it's not really a worthwhile thing just yet ranking these teams and then it's coming from somebody who's not an authority in call of duty in any way not an expert they haven't followed it for a decade like some people have yeah you know what i mean it's to me it's just like eh, what what do you expect they want some controversies they want some clicks like deserto when jacob hale wrote his um, a while ago and and hastro absolutely flipped his lid like you know i mean <laughs> it's just a, it's the same that shit looks man. a bit awkward now though doesn't it <laughs> yeah just a little bit but uh, yeah. we, we knew that would happen as soon as he went fucking mental saying we're the best you knew they were gonna lose it's just it's just law it's just how it happens so yeah for me just not really uh, not really anything to go on and and the tournament format that's coming up will completely change how it's just been so judging it based yeah. based on london's stop isn't gonna and, be too effective either yeah and i want to actually right surprisingly defend nameless and Fuck saying that me. no but for saying that he would have been asked <laughs> to do that as well and i know I for a fact he would have been like well how the fuck am i supposed to do this it's literally just based off scrim rumors and everyone was trashing him and you're like well <laughs> hey, what's he yeah, supposed I, to base I, it off like i mean yeah fuck and but at the same time like <laughs> I mean, you know what's he gonna do <laughs> like how does he predict this i, to I get why power rankings are made right i understand I get it, it but <laughs> people click in and go on so on and so forth but 
my, you know, and they're going to put them out, right? Because people click them and look at them and discuss them like we yeah. are now. Yeah. They just, for me, they don't mean anything yet. Benchmarking is so important in Call of Duty with these new games every year to figure out where people are. Now, if you do one after the, the London event, when there's been a small tournament and we can figure out, then you start getting more of a picture. Sample size is very, very important for me because there has to be a logic in the way that you're doing this. Um, but like you see, you know, Optic Gaming are now dead fucking last. <laughs> Um, they've, you know, the knife has been stuck in because they lost two games, but the sub has also lost two games. Equally, what could have also been called an upset for them, right? But they're, you know, they're like ninth or something on this list. So yeah. for, for me, you know, why why there? In fact, the sub where the hell are the sub Oh, they're 11th on this. They're 11th. So anybody zero on the two just goes straight down to the bottom. Like how how are like like it's, Seattle it's probably could have been apart a from bit apart from Dallas Empire. Dallas Empire. Yeah. yeah, apart from the Empire who are fifth. <laughs> they lost again. So there's no substance to it, really. Well, I know, but it's, no, I, this, again, it's hard. It's hard. Like it's context. Yeah, we we should not pay attention to any power ranking until about mid season. I think that feels like a good point where, where there's been let, quite a few that's gone this on. This conversation's itching in Adam's scapula right no, now. It's just He's like right in there. It, right it, in it there. It is what it is, you know. I understand why they've done it, and it's, it's serving the serving the purpose, right? And everyone loves saying, "No, my team's better than your team," and and so forth. And everyone likes being the genius that's predicted who the best teams are. But no one fucking knows until um, until a few times um, have gone down. At that, at that point, the the league will just speak for itself. The league table. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> the power rankings will be the rankings, and yeah. then everyone can stop putting out fucking shit articles for 10k yeah. views. I, 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 was, I actually, it was it was it was shift was tweeting saying, "I wonder if I should make a challenge as power rankings." I was like literally oh, just literally now. just the power that the pro like where they finished in the event yeah. it, that's it like I, I mean he did say yeah well that's pretty much right isn't it, it Maybe was like, you, a joke power rankings just rate things on really really random piss things people off yeah yeah like a, power rankings of um haircuts in esports school yeah well i'll be fucking last <laughs> yeah um, that, was, that was the main reason <laughs> I'm, I'm, just gonna put, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna pick a team like i'll put the mutineers 12th because you know i don't think they'll do very well on land um because it's not near the sea so that's it just fuck it that, that'll do that'll do it's not it's not like florida this place it's got about as much <laughs> as yeah. much weight behind it as the others do they're too far away from the sea they won't be used to it um <laughs> but that, that's that's how it is i tell you the, the the point i wanted to make about this is the reason that I, I even brought this power ranking up um and this power ranking and names is power ranking is how Venomous, I thought some of the responses from the pros were. We heard pros saying, you know, fuck the power rankings, you know, who puts us off and they were going, oh, fuck them, they don't mean nothing, they're shit. I'm sitting there going, they do. I mean, we don't have to be so angry about it. <laughs> like, people are going to rank you regardless, right? As a professional player, as somebody who is competing, people are going to look at you and say, well, I think he's X, Y, or Z, right? And no player I've ever known has gone, yeah, 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 we're shit, or yeah, I'm the best, or whatever. Like, well, they, some say I'm the best, um, but they've never gotten an agree going, yeah, I think we're sixth. Right? No, no, yeah, I think we're sick at the moment. But every single line, the same, the same line from every single player in every single esports is the same shit. We're going to get better. We're going to do much. We know what we need to improve. We're going to practice X, Y, and Z, and we're going to put in more effort because we, we believe we're the best. We're going to be first. We're going to try and win because they're competitors. They shouldn't really give a shit what the fans think. They need, you know, too right. it, yeah, it's, it's, and, and people say, I'm not, I'm not putting out the Jared thing because Jared makes me fucking laugh, by the way. Um, it's it's just like I think sometimes a pro's value is tied too much to social media and these this stuff. Like if I criticize a player on here, or if I went and say, oh, I think Vortex is shit, right? Uh, and I said for X, Y, and Z reasons, they'll take it personally. Right? They'll they'll all take it personally. No matter how good of a relationship I have with a player, I have a, at some point most pro players had an argument with them. Because if you say something negative, they don't like it because it's them. It's personal, but it's not personal for me. It's it's never personal for anybody who's doing this stuff. You know, I've had big arguments like uh, with Mad Cat. You know, who was on last week, Tommy, for instance. I've had some great arguments with Tommy in the past, um, but never, it's never personal. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I can like the player or can not like the player. I don't judge you on whether or not I'm going to have a beer with you after the event. No, it's, it's not like it's not like you're tweeting out or anything saying, "Oh, mate, his breath fucking stinks and his yeah. missus his dog." Like you're not saying any of that. <laughs> you're just saying I don't think you're that good. Do you know what I mean? Like, and if not, prove it. Like that's that's the main thing. Like, sometimes it's really not that even angry. That either prove me that I'm proved that it, I'm wrong. It's sometimes like, oh, he had a bad map, and you'll get some shit, and you're like, 
Fuck, Come on, just mate. accept that you've not played great. Or well, I, I, I mean, it, it, it happened. Like, <laughs> it happened. That I, that still, the worst one for me was when Bantz came at me after the fucking um, pro league qualifier. <laughs> that was <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> holy fuck. It's <laughs> just like, wow. <laughs> all right. And I like Bantz as well. And it was just so oh, fuck. That's the thing. You'll see them after the event at the bar. Yeah, I seen them like literally in the airport, and I was like, "You're a pal." It was just like, well. Come on, like it's not personal. It was more so you played shit this weekend. I'm sorry, it's like my job. I have well. to like, I have to say something. If if we sat on the fence, I was about to say if we sat on the fence, we'd never get hired. But well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about that a minute? Why the fuck weren't you you two hired over some of the people they picked? <laughs> well, I'm okay, do I, I? I can go out on a ledge. I can go out on a ledge if you want, and I can say, right, nameless. Pretty pointless. Lottie, a lot of improving to do. Who else we got? Uh, Momo, nice guy. I don't think he's that. Particular. Yeah, fuck that fucking guy. Awesome. <laughs> I like, I like, I like, I like he's, he's entertaining. Maven, good. Merc, boring, but getting better. Like, th- there are there are alternatives out there. All right, so here, here's the thing. I like, so first okay. of all, that's subjective, right? Of course. I think... But my and this, and, right, this is, so. and here's, here's the weird thing, right? Because I'm normally very blunt with how I think about people. I generally do believe the talent are very, very good at the moment. And I, I honestly, like, hand on heart, couldn't say that I could replace any of them except Phil. Fuck him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the talent they have at the moment is very, very good. I will, I will say that. And as much as I appreciate you guys up saying we should be there, as far as I'm concerned, there are many people at Activision who clearly don't think so, right? And where are we going to improve? Whatever. Um, I know for me personally, and I'm not going to speak on Tun's behalf, uh, a decade of casting this decade of loving call of duty you know we started up a podcast because i love talking call of duty you won't shut up about it um even when we cover negative subjects there's nothing there's nothing closer to my heart i'm very good friends with a lot of people in the industry and of course me and tom would have loved to have been there but it's their show right i'm never gonna i'm never gonna sit here and pretend i'm owed fuck all from them never gonna sit here and pretend i wouldn't love to be there and that i wasn't crushed and disappointed to not be there it's just the nature of the business. It's, ju- it's just how it is, right? If we get an opportunity to come and cast it, of course I'll cast it. I had some of the most fun casting in my career last chance, mostly for <laughs> thanks to Vortex, if I'm being perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy what I do. Sometimes I don't enjoy casting as much as I can do. Sometimes I fucking love hosting. But hosting is, is a very big thing. But I enjoy building a show. But I'm okay with... Adam, you saying I should be there, but not over the expense of these other people. I appreciate the sentiment, but for me personally, I think they're very, very talented people. And I'm also very good friends with basically everybody on that roster. Yeah, but take, take away the friendship part, because that part doesn't matter. The best thing is, like, oh, the main thing is putting on a good show, right? And, and I feel like I must say, like, if I thought you two were shit, or, like, not, shouldn't be on it, <laughs> then I would say. Like, so it's not any sort of bias or, like, keeping up appearances and being friendly here. Like, genuinely, I just don't think as much substance among many of them. And I know you're saying you're good friends with them and, and you think they're really talented. That's fine. But you, you, the friends part doesn't really matter when it comes down to the nitty gritty. And the thing is, like, putting on the best show, right? So you'd think mm-hmm. they'd want the best people there, the ones that are mo- most engaged and the fans can, can, can like... Um, not, not not necessarily identify with but enjoy like listening to and actually grow with them whereas i don't think you're going to get that with a nameless or, or a merc or something yeah he's liked but he's a bit fucking bland whereas you two are not bland <laughs> like you know what i mean like you're more engaged and i'm gonna I, i'm gonna tune in for the call of duty when it's these guys on i may tune in for the personalities a bit more when guys like yourselves are there Hopefully I, I, they I, I, challenges stream back yeah, maybe. Well, I think right. I think the the difference uh, with that is, and and this is being very so. Tan will know this because he's worked with me for a while. I'm very critical of my own work, incredibly critical. I'm very and critical mine. of Tan's work most of the time as well. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I so so I don't. It's difficult to talk about myself. I like ranting about other things. For me, it's a very personal thing when I cast or when I talk about Call of Duty, right? I do this podcast because I genuinely love talking about Call of Duty, and I think Twitter doesn't have enough context. I like educating. I like discussing small mechanics, minutia, and the business side of it. So when I'm a host, and I have hosted Call of Duty in the past, as well as some other esports, I get to discuss that with experts, genius people, and we can have these in-depth conversations. I love it. When I've done analyst segments, it's the same thing. Casting for me as well, like I need to know that game very, very well as a caster, or I feel like a fucking fraud because my entire way of casting, and it's not everybody's kind of way. They, people do different things. You've got all these different styles. 
I need to be in the mind of a player. Now, I'm fucking not very good at Call of Duty. I've played about 250 GBs on this game, by the way. Fucking hell, it was 150 last week. You played 100 GBs this week, <laughs> I played more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of GBs. I don't know how many it is because I've been playing Tarkov. 400 next but week. I need to put myself in the, in, the, in the mental space of a player to understand that player, right? And sometimes it doesn't translate well. And there are issues with my casting and there are issues with tons casting that maybe to people who are picking these talent rosters, it's not as good as the others, right? Me and Tom both have accents. We do. Everyone's I, got an accent. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are, for broadcasting, you need to have a more neutral accent. Now, my accent now is much better than when I started five years ago. If you'd heard me five years ago, you'd honestly think I was fucking backwards because I was very slurred, very Essex, very, very slang. <laughs> It's it was not it's it's a lot better now. When was that AW? I, huh? Was that AW? Even then, yeah. But going back all the way all the way back, I was very much more from Essex. I sucked last year. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> and I, I think I think I was getting better. But the, also the thing is, like last year was my first time casting back for maybe three years. I think people miss that for a lot of events. Been, anyway. I, if, if, yeah. if you remember, I, I took a divergence into hosting. Yeah. yeah, on the Gfinity uh, desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was doing I wasn't casting as much. And if and here's the honest truth. It's like anything you practice. You can be out of practice casting. And I thought a lot of my games last year were, were shit. It's difficult to cast uh, the Challenger League sometimes. And especially when you haven't yeah. done it for a long time. I was, okay, I, I've, got, I've got an idea then, very quickly. Why why are they not hiring people to do shoulder content as well as these these people that they had to bring in for the main broadcast, you know? Because they're going to need a lot of content around things. There's so much history and, and so many storylines around, around Call of Duty esports that they, they can't just chuck away like they have done with all these teams besides your Atlantas and, and, and your Chicago, I guess, with the Optic Link and OGLA. Fuck that. Uh, I think... I think I, I, what, what Side content, and you guys are the perfect people to do it, right? One one area where I will say that I, I and this is this is an ego thing. One thing I, where I do have an advantage, and one thing I think that has missed sometimes in Call of Duty that I do pride myself on is European Call of Duty history. I do not think there is anyone else out there more capable than me of covering it, um, because I, I mean, and I've seen this sometimes when things have been said on the desk or, or by cast. And I'm sitting there going, look, I know that shit. <laughs> I know the shit on the back of my hand. You want to talk about? Uh, Black Ops Three champs XP. Yes, I went to a talk. YouTube. I went no, no, and this and this is the funny thing, right? Um, I, I don't know if I saw the YouTube thing we did out there um, talking about champs before it happened, and we were talking about Exertus. We were talking about the Exertus team, uh, which oh, you, what were you call it the event? It was something different, wasn't Fa it? Fabi, 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 yeah. Fabi. That's the one. I keep thinking Frico, and it isn't Frico. Fabi, and you guys got trashed. In that thing, like the, the the Americans thought you guys were shit. You were mm. fifth in the European League, but I knew different. And the reason I knew different is because I knew the Europeans, and I knew that the teams that you were facing against in Europe were playing against you a very specific way to nullify the way that you guys play. Because you guys like to play head on, very very high tempo, getting the teeth. The pro teams in Europe knew you'd play like that and would just basically leave you hanging in certain areas, yeah. and they were able to beat you tactically. The Americans had no idea what was coming. So they ran straight into the teeth of Exertus back in Black Ops 3 and got absolutely railed. They just It just kept happening. They had no idea how to play bad. against you. So they were playing standard Call of Duty, running into the teeth, and you guys were like, this is the way we wanted to play in Europe. But the European teams knew we wanted this and didn't let us do it. So as soon as they come up against that buzzsaw that was Exertus, they got cut down. Now, I didn't think you were going to go high as fourth, hmm. but I did defend Exertus back then. So it, it's just one of those things, and this is a, <laughs> this is a tangent now. I do appreciate Adam for for coming off, but this is that's just that's just my view on it. Um, do I hope we're back? Of course, I hope we're back. I hope we get to cast at some point. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, what I, I mean, will say the, is, uh, what I'm will, just, I'm just yeah, well, this is this is what I was going to say. It? This is what I was going to say. Like, we're we're never going to like. <laughs> I think I think me and both Bryce both know, and Adam, I absolutely appreciate the sentiment as well. We both know we're not going to break into that main talent lineup at the moment because I mean we didn't all last year and you know last year the only pro we commentated was at Vegas at the beginning of the year and champs at the end of the year which bear London. in mind uh, is oh and London of course bear in mind champs we nearly didn't but that's a story for another time um, <laughs> so basically yeah we we uh, I think we always knew we were never going to be part of the the the, the full CDL broadcast unless there was another two then potentially we could have been involved but I think. My biggest problem with not doing anything in Minnesota was the fact that there wasn't a Challenger stream. Because I presume that would be, if we were going to be doing something, that's probably what we're going to be asked to do. 
and Let's quickly talk about the Challenger thing then. Let's yeah. move on. Not being a Challenger stream was um, a strange decision for me. Vordex. Yep. How was the venue? It was yeah, all right, you know. Be honest. It, it was all, it was all right as far as um, open bracket. It had a lot of stations. You know, it had a lot of booths around. Um, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It wasn't nothing special, but it wasn't like wasn't as bad as bad. the garage picture no. insinuated. Nah, wasn't that bad. You was it in a garage though? It's in a, um, it was like a garage, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that part's true then when people say it's in a garage. I don't... I think... Did it not just have a loading bay though? Was that not just like... It, it was more like a basement, like a big basement. It wasn't, yeah, because it wasn't, wasn't like a car park. Wasn't Silly saying that they've actually hosted like... He's been to a gig down there or something. Like, so it's yeah, an actual saying, venue like, rather than... Yeah. It was just maybe just how it looked because he took it next to the loading Come venue and, it, really looked like, the and it, it sort of looked like a car park. I get it. I don't think they actually... I don't think it actually was. The, the roof was pretty low, to be fair, man. You, anyone six foot six, man. Yeah, I was gonna say you'd be around. fine, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it was a problem. The, the, from what I saw of it and what I understand, it it seemed okay. If people was like her car park, I thought it's outside, at like minus twenty or whatever it was in Minnesota. And I get people going, oh, you know, but it's rent to leave now. But it's a hundred ninety-two team bracket. Do you understand the amount yeah. of like equipment and logistics it takes and the size of a place you need to have that? So I don't know. It's I think the the venue was fine. It's difficult to have that size of a bracket anywhere. And trust me, I've been to some real shitholes, aka the Trocadero. Oh, oh, oh. oh I've been to that one. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that, that was, was that was one of the events I wasn't at. I'd rather and play I, in a I, wet I, car I, park I, on a Sunday I, night I, at Sainsbury's. I, 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 would like I would like to stand firm as a member of EGL and realize that that bro, <laughs> I wasn't involved at this point. But, I, but we, I'm sure we have actually laughed about this at, yeah. at some point. Put it this way. I, I remember rightly that uh, somebody said that it made, <laughs> it made Blackpool look fucking mint. <laughs> no, it made no, I don't, play, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Not unless they, they were playing in a sewage plant. Could anywhere make Blackpool look good? <laughs> they're, hmm. they're fucking... Oh, From what I saw of Norbrek. other pictures of that area, it seemed fine, right? Yeah, it was. No, nice nobody's going was. there for the sightseeing tour. None of you are sitting there going, oh, I need to have a, a heated bar and fucking first-class accommodations. You're going there to play, and it looked like a good tournament area. The, like, the, main, problem, funny, like, the main problem is water. What, like, $3 for water. Couldn't bring your own bottle in. Couldn't refill. Okay, refillable water should have probably been a thing. Yeah, you would think that would be just like for the sake of saving plastic, like rather than like the the convenience of the. Well, that was a big thing in America as well. Yeah, so that, in America, there's always always them bottle stations. I like, I would presume that would be a given. I do I do think that is something that should be addressed, and hopefully it is. Um, but I don't know if that's a venue thing though. That could be venue could exclusive. That's maybe nothing to do with the CDL. You know, so I don't want to jump down that route too much because I said that that could be something out of their control, possibly, maybe not. <laughs> Adam, you've been a bit caught on this. What do you think? I'm trying not to piss myself, mate. I really need to go to the toilet. Oh no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so no, and, and I'm I'm getting spammed out with work at the moment, so that's why I've been a bit quiet. That's all. That's fine. Apologies. No problem. So no, um, we talk about challenges. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, put a stream up so people can watch that as well because these players could be the ones that are drafted in future for the franchises and, and putting spotlight on those is important yeah. in my opinion, you know? So that, that's that's basically all I'll say. Parking garage or not, as long as it's suitable, that, that's fine by me. Yeah. Um, do you I don't, don't want to say this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you can pop up at any point. I've been holding it in for so long, but I can't. Um, I don't want to say too much about this because obviously like, there is a certain amount of bias for me in terms of not being there. Um, but I will say this. There was a $250,000 tournament that weekend with 192 teams, and I didn't get to see it. And I, I'm, yeah. and don't get me wrong, right? I understand that the viewership is terrible. I think it wouldn't have been too bad. But I would like to have seen it. I, would, I just would like to have seen it. That's all. I got to see three maps, um, and then they moved it back downstairs, which is for scheduling. I understand that the league takes precedent. It does. How, how, was the, how was it last year? How was the viewership last year? Like, shocking. I don't think it was good. I think finals and that did all right. But also, bear in mind, last year there was five streams. Yeah, true. There was Alpha, Bravo, yeah. Charlie, Delta, and Open. There was yeah. five streams. Oh, I, I think it'll do well, honestly, me. I think, I think it would have been a good fit this, last year. I think, I think it would have had a good fit this weekend. Yeah, I think it would have been okay. I think, I think it would have done And fine, I think but... people would have tuned in because the fact it's for 250 grand, and, so there's more on it's the line. Like a, it's like a proper event, whereas they're playing their own little, I don't know, like their league matches and stuff, like yeah. a bit different. 
Whereas keeping up with two events last year was probably quite hard. You just yeah. watched the pro one. I think so. All right. Well, uh, we, we've definitely gone on for quite a while. So we actually have to talk about the teams because um, we haven't talked about the teams at all in this last part mm. of the podcast. And I don't want to keep people for hours and hours. Um, all right. Let's uh, let, let's just get down the list of the teams and we'll talk about how we think they did this weekend and what we expected, what we didn't see and all that sort of stuff. Uh, let's start at the top then, top of the league currently, uh, as people have got Atlanta phase. Now, for, for context, for everybody listening uh, who's joined us the weeks before, they were expected to be the best team coming in. We expected them to come straight out of the gate. We've heard they're very, very good. The MP5 meta certainly suits them. A lot of speed on that team. And uh, for me, they, they basically delivered exactly what we expected. There's nothing too much out of it. We just we knew they were good. I don't think we expect them to just dumpster on everybody, but they did exactly that. Yeah, they they were solid, weren't they? I think yeah. even like to see them beat Dallas in the way that they did, like first map was like pretty close, but they came back in good fashion and Azir Cave as well, like using all those SMGs was I I mean I know it is that sort of map, but I just think they are gonna be really strong. I think if anyone any of the power rankings is right, I think it would be hard. And I know it's without playing against everybody, so you don't know how playstyles match up against each other, but I do think based on what we've seen they seem like they could be the best team, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I love to see them play Chicago to sort of help me on this one, but from and I think it was like, and by the way, fuck me, I loved having Teep back on the desk. That guy is the, be is really the best, me the off. best analyst we've ever had. Full stop. And I don't mean that as any offense to any of current analysts or anybody. If it, 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 me and you were on there, Bryce, we would not be anywhere near as good as he is. And I am. Did you know it's I didn't say his name at all when I was calling out the other people yes. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he was so good, and the fact that he was just breaking it down and he's just saying this is just so it's just so calculated. Like everything they do is just S, uh, their S and D was just like. Teep's a generational talent. Yeah. I'll give him real. So I've I've cast with Teep and we've had long conversations. In fact, one of my most savage casts ever was with Teep against the Australians in Black Ops 3. But I've also worked the desk with him. Uh, and I think the the most fun I've ever had on the desk was with him. And it was Gfinity when Gfinity brought in Matt Vitos when there, no one else was doing them. And we sat oh, yeah. there and we discussed them for ages. And Teep was loving it. And I was like, and I was like, this is what I want. I want to have that kind of conversation. He's very good at putting his point across. He knows how to present information. Um, he has, of course, one of the greatest voices I've ever fucking heard on a human. Um, unbelievable. By you, do you love him, Bryce? Mate, I love Teep. Look at him. How could you not love Teep? <laughs> Honestly, he's good looking. He's in shape. He's entertaining. He's got a great voice. He knows his shit. He's clever. Like, he's basically like a Greek god that has stepped out of myth and legend to come grace us for Call of Duty. To grace Call of Duty, of all things, that is the shittest god ever. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, he's been I, I, on the I, short shore there, like yeah. I, he is he is a superlative talent. Like it's no, there's no fucking question in my mind. Um, whether or not he does it all year or not, I don't know. Like he is, you know how we we talk about like uh, courage and just like courage's personality is like like the entertainment side, the comedy side, the the silliness side. Like he is like an alpha prospect of that, right? Teep is a different facet of it. Like he isn't going to be cracking the most shows or whatever, but the way he presents himself. Is entertaining in a very different way. It's like, uh, like an, like you know, Rich Attenborough documentary, right? It's as much entertaining as a sitcom, like a good sitcom, but they're both very different forms of entertainment in the same medium. Yeah, right. That's what Teep is. Yeah, I think this weekend made me realize how much the broadcast had missed him. And I think you know, like people in the chat are saying, like Teep is talent. I should Revan should always have stayed. The thing is, as well though, it's. And this is to preface maybe, you know, a, a lot of other questions around this weekend. It's like you don't know what goes on negotiations, that sort of thing. So yeah. there's always that. And I think people forget that. Like, I mean, shit, like, I, I know we're, we're going wildly off topic again. Like Maven was even tweeting the other week saying he's not sure if he's involved. You know, like these contract discussions outside of the public eye mean a lot. And like... I, and, and people sometimes think, oh, well, they've just got rid of them because they don't like them and, oh, they hate us and, oh, Activision don't know what they're doing. It's not so much that. It's just like, you know. Well, the thing is, as well, they're, they're using, is it Bad Moon, the, the card or whatever, the yeah. um, Facento's yeah, new yeah, agency yeah, yeah. thing that they brought in. Like, yeah. you you never know. Like, I, I imagine that, well, they are just starting out. So you imagine there's teething issues there, working out exactly how things need to go and then getting, getting acquainted with Activision Blizzard and, and the new people behind the league. So like, yeah, you, you never know how it's going, especially when there's a third party involved. Now that's, that's trying to do the best for its client so it itself can earn a lot of money. 
So there's no, there's no real surprise that that he went on for as long as he did, in my opinion. Yeah, he might he not he might even be doing all year. I don't know if he's doing all year. You got yeah. remember Teep's a very successful streamer, very successful. Oh yeah, he doesn't either. That, which means that obviously you know he probably loves this, but at the same point, you know, he misses a business, few days of streaming, yeah. but not not too strange. It's like four days. Yeah, like got, there's traveling, yeah. there's rehearsals, there's all this other stuff he's no, got. To do. They would have had to offer him. Fucking that's a lot, wedge. That's a lot the bag. Streaming. Yeah, the bag would have had to be offered to do that for for it to be worth it. Unless he was just like quite happy to do it because he wanted to. But if he was like to the point of, well, you actually have to make up for the money I'm going to lose streaming here, then they're going to have to be coughing up quite the pretty penny per day. Maybe that's why we weren't there. He's taking our jobs. He probably just needed a, a break from the fucking shitty battle royale he plays all the time, to, to be honest hey, with you. I, I like uh, Oh, come on, still? <laughs> You're not playing yeah. it now, though, are you? Uh, no, I'm not. But okay, there we go. We, that's not, he he is because he has to to make money. That's that's the only reason he's doing it. I'm sure of it. Hey, if I could make money playing it, I would be on it now. Um, yeah, I've got a big community, to be fair. Yeah, Blackout's great. I just have nobody to play it with. Everyone moved on to Modern Warfare. Um, let's, we need to go back. We need to go back to the teams. We can't. We can't keep going on. We okay. can't talk about Blackout now. I'm not having it. We're going to have to as... rattle through these men. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Atlanta phase. They looked every bit as good as we thought they were going to. Yes. Um, they dropped the map to the uh, the subliners, but they look very very. Pretty. It's clearly the most favourite team at the moment. Yes, Agreed. except for for socials because that's just Chicago Huntsman. But everybody believes Atlanta Phase are the number one team. Yes, a lot to live up to. Um, no real weaknesses in that team either. That's the thing. I didn't really see anybody. Really small, so like, <laughs> just hand that, hand is that a weakness or a strength? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, the one one thing I would say is maybe I mean do they have a leader in that team if things go south like I mean I think I'm, Simp's pretty vocal you yeah know? I'm gonna say I'm I'm literally clutching at straws here it's just only dogs like, can hear it so it's very hard for him to lead this <laughs> I'm just yeah, clutching Reap. at straws but yeah it, it, Reap's head coach as well well no, yeah Reap's that's it they've Reap. got him there to say chill your fucking shit yeah. but we we go on to the other teams <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah let's go uh, let's go on let's move on then because Chicago Huntsman are next. Looks, uh, so, looks solid to be fair look like they actually like you see when you've seen that team on paper at the start and you're like oh yeah that that's the team they're gonna be unreal and then watching scrims they were like mm. and then they just dominated and respawned it looked really good like it looked how you, you'd think it would look yeah and like I, I think for me the most impressive was probably Ossidies though wasn't it like I mean, unsurprisingly, really. I think you look at that that roster on paper and you sort of say, "Your yeah, scumps, your yeah, formals are in there. Envoys I are so... Envoy was great. Oh, envoy was... Re- right. Is it Envoy or Envoy? Envoy or Envoy? Envoy. Yeah. Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> there you no, there's go. too many Dylans. There's too many Dylans. Dylan, yeah, there's a lot of Dylans. Uh, yeah. But, like, I for me, I thought... Well, to be honest, you could have picked any of them, but I, I thought Arsene really stood out and major props on him on the weight loss as well. Your boy's fucking killing uh, it. And, and we he's love running to an MP5 that. as well. Ah, mate, he's a fucking beast. You love know. to see it. And then he swore on stage as well. A pocket, I fucking love it. He just turned around and said, that shit was easy. Oh, I objected into my fucking... I, I imagine there was quite a lot of pressure on the T2P duo, you know, to like live up to how they were before, obviously oh, being on the percent. Dynasty roster and stuff like the amount of pressure on their, on their it. shoulders is, is the, ridiculous. The shit talking as well, like the Dallas-Chicago rivalry. There's, there's there's a little bit there, whether or not, they, you know, because a lot of players are oh, playing up for the camera and other players are went, no, no. There's some pressure there to play Dallas. Oh, like, right. With, with Krim and Clay on one side and, and Formal and Scump on the other. Like, yeah. That's oh, amazing. And they, ran so, and they, they lived up to, the, to the, the promise, I guess. They weren't as much the hype as it was the promise. Everyone, on, when you saw it on paper, were like, okay, yeah, this is a, cal- a championship caliber team. And, and, and you can't really yeah. say they don't look like it just yet. Um, Very much. Let's talk about the Rock here. The Rocker. Oh, rocker. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, is it Rocker? Rocker, rocker, hundred percent, rocker. It's hard because um, they've went, they went two and zero. It yeah. looks like yeah, they've had a solid week. But then you think if they didn't get that forfeit and go two 0 down to Aix and that, what would we be saying about them? Yeah, if they lost that. One the one wasn't the biggest two wins, but I thought it was it was a good two wins, especially in front of a home crowd. Right, it's important. I think someone's talking about this uh, earlier on, saying home advantage this year is it a real thing, and I actually think it may be the opposite. I mean, yeah, it's great. When you're winning uh, and you and you're t- you know the crowd is shouting and it's fantastic and your blood's pumping, I went. But they're your fans now. It's no longer like oh you might not have a lot of fans in the audience because it's all one like optic or whatever. It's now if you're going into your home state, yeah. or your home city, 
those are your fans. They are people, and they're going to be in your merch. They're going to be shouting for you. So if you don't perform, you're going to feel like you're letting them all down. The same thing the Ravens are going to have to deal with come London. There's going to be a crowd there that are going to fucking love them. Mm. But that crowd is not going to be entirely happy if they start losing. It's going to be very quiet in there. The, the mood is going to be shit. Yeah, I, I, I alcohol sales that, will be through the roof, mate. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, didn't the couple of bucks run out of? Um, yeah, I right, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I was there and I spoke to people who worked there, and they said they just said that so they stopped selling, so they could stop selling it because everyone yeah. was too pissed. Um, but I've never said that to just uh, because it would ruin the effect of the London <laughs> crowd. But so, so sorry to, to strip the illusion. It was there, good but. anyway. They're, they're, yeah. I, oh, I, people I, were smashed. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. Hopefully yeah, it's like that. I'm gonna, this time we'll drink it dry then. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> you two alone. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm there at the moment. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> but no, uh, the rocket. It was a good stuff. I, I I'll tell you something. I really like Gary V. Like I watched his segment and I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. He's just he's just swearing, just going, yeah, this is the north. You know, this is what I think. I'm like, that is. I went. That's a person. We talked about branding right last time we were in this. Mm -hmm. I think Adam, you were on with that episode when we talked about the brand and what we expect for these these teams to do, right? Him alone sets a tone for that brand of, and that's something that fans will engage with more than just about anything else. Mm -hmm. I when I saw that, I was like, "That's fucking brilliant." I was like, "It's it's something that people are going to latch onto that attitude, that personality, that uh, that entire culture." People are going to go, "That's exactly what I want." Oh, I see him more as a spokesperson than a minority owner in the in the in the uh, franchise, you know, like you, you yeah. don't get him in to, to keep him behind the scenes, just like pumping money in and, and saying, no, no, you should pivot this way. Your content should look like this. No, you get him in to come, to come get in front of everyone and be brash and, and chat shit, you know, and he did just that. Uh, Shemi ain't going to be there every event. So they do need to carve out an identity outside of him or at least embody that whenever they go to an event, but it's going to be yeah. very hard without uh, like having a, a traveling Gary V with you. Yeah, but hopefully if they, if they can do that, if they can, if if that's what Minnesota choose to choose as their brand, that'll be a very popular brand. People will really engage with that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it gets on. Let's move on to um, the the big underdogs to this one. The big underdogs, Paris, twelfth on almost every power ranking going into this uh, event. Yeah, I fucked Paris off too. And no, you know what? Actually, I'm Silly not surprised boys. that they, we Silly asked a, we asked a couple of them if they, if they would come on. Is that no? Oh, sorry, we're busy. <laughs> Fuck. Well, I, I speak to their head coach fairly frequently. Their head coach was actually confident, and I just put it down to, yeah, yeah, every, every head coach is confident. Yeah, I know, but that's right? Joel, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> is that, um, yeah, and he yeah, said, smashed him, yeah, Joel, yeah. But he, here's the difference, and I didn't I didn't give it much credit at the time, and Joel, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> here's, here's the things that he was saying that was different. He was telling me actually how they measured up against the other pro teams, the ones that you didn't get to see. And I'm sitting there going, he's giving me maps and stuff and, and what's going on. I'm sitting there and going, is that just him saying they played well against them, or because he didn't give me all the scores and stuff? He said he goes, no, no, we, we're we're playing pretty well against them, and even up to the the scrims before the the, the event, he went, oh yeah, we 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 uh, we split maps with these. We actually did better in maps against these. I'm sitting there going, those are some pretty good fucking uh, teams let, you're doing. Let, that let me say this for a second. Like they got had to scrim EU teams for a month, AM teams for a month or something before yeah. um before Christmas break, and. They probably thought that that was a bad thing, but I I actually think that EU am is actually not that bad. Like it's actually pretty good. You so taught them everything, Steve, did you? Nah, but I think that they didn't get as bad practice as they thought, and then they've they've went and obviously got the two or three weeks in before the event, and they've done well so far. They, they look pretty decent. I won't say who said it. But one thing that did come out of Paris to me, um, and like I said, again, this is bluster, right? I, I didn't I didn't fully believe the hype until I, I saw it happen. They said they've been playing some EU AM teams that they thought were better than people they've then scrimmed in when they went over. They played some EU AM teams who they fully believe were better scrims than some of the teams that are currently playing in the league. Did they not like, say that that hybrid team who were in the final were possibly the best team they played? Yeah, they did. Yeah. It's interesting. But mm. Paris, that's a big week for Paris. Yeah. Right? Big statement. Took down the Ravens. Big statement. No. Took down the Ravens. That's 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 crazy. And Took then, down Optic Gaming, who obviously know everybody because of that has dumped it on. But I mean, taking I thought the taking down the Ravens was huge. Fair. To be fair, look at the names like Kismet and Zed and Dens. Like they came top six and fourth at champs. It's just because you're looking at Shocks and Luca, but they didn't really get a chance to show what they no. could do last year. So that was one of the biggest shames of last year that they didn't make champs because. They were fucking really, really good all year last year on the Challenger side of things. 
And it's, it, I love seeing fucking Luca and Shox back up there again. I, I've never really spoken to Luca that much, but I've got a lot of time for Shox, and it was really nice to see them slaughter a couple of people, actually. It was good. It was really, really good. And yeah, it's just nice to see them back at the top. I miss the Aussies, and it's good It's good to see them doing some bits. Some bits. Some bits. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's interesting to see how they keep going, though, after this, because there are yeah. harder teams to play. We'll see if fourth is accurate. Uh, let's let's move on then nah. to uh, spoiler. It's not. Nah, I think, I'd, I'd say fifth or sixth, probably. Speaking of fifth, uh, Florida, 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 <laughs> Florida, 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 uh, Florida Mutineers went one and one, both very close games. So LA really, you can't Seattle. grasp as to what's what then? Yeah. No, both three twos, both three twos. Yeah, I think you know they they were always going to look decent. I think you know you looked at well. I say that. We had them pretty low. I think everyone on that roster though is a relatively decent player, and you know they, they they did okay. They did okay. I think they did probably better than what people expected. I, I think say. I think a misconception of power rankings is if someone's on the bottom, that means they're shit. It's like no, that the gap between the best teams uh, and what you say the worst teams are are very fucking minuscule. They're all amazing oh, yeah. players. So like, well, yeah, that, a twelfth could do well against a half well, that was very, first or something. It know? was very apparent, wasn't it, that the amount of players in the pro league has shrunk a little bit because the games oh. were relatively competitive. Uh, for the, for the who are we part. on about now? Sorry, Florida. Florida. Mutineers. Florida. Florida. Oh, they actually didn't seem too bad then. Yeah, they, they won. They did. They did. They did okay. And you know, I think as the, you know, we're not going to figure out who's the best and worst teams until like there's at least like three, four, five events in. But like, it's yeah. just uh, you know, they, they, could, okay. they could be zero and two. Or I, d- I didn't know what to expect from them to be honest, because like, was it Mox, Pristini, Havoc, Frosty, Frosty, and Scott Skies? Yeah, Skies. So I, if you say that team of Black Ops Four, team. like you know, all of them did all right. In fairness. Just none of them like come across as like that mad like slayer, like you know what I mean. Um, they all seem pretty. Do you, do you know the issue with this team? Do I is think that, what? Is sometimes they don't stand out. I think you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, I, that's what I'm out. trying to say. Yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole team doesn't stand out very very often, and also bearing in mind, like the mutineers announced last, like dead last, like by a, a considerable margin. People were doing power rankings and not if we did one and not including them. Because they hadn't announced their team to the very last minute, yeah. and there's yeah. not like the like a a personality on that team that really stands out. Like they're all they all got different personalities and they're all well liked and there's hype sure. around them. But it's not like it's not like a, a scump on Chicago. <laughs> yeah, like, holy shit, he's in that team. Let's talk about it. I'm actually um, looking forward to seeing Pristini without like his brother or behind any mad standout players. I think he actually is going to step up and become. We're going to actually see a different side of him because he's always been doing the dirty work. In every team he's been in since IW, yeah, and he doesn't have to do that anymore. He's got havoc. <laughs> There's like another one about like him. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Um, here's here's the other curious thing. So on this this rank standings I've got, they're above the Ravens, but they both have the same map difference. <laughs> but they played more, so I don't know where they're going off wins first gives the difference into this one. I don't know how it's going to end up. Might be going on on who they've played as well. But this yeah. is why the power rankings are. Oh, this is the standing. This is how they're oh. standing. So, oh, the standing. Oh, okay. No, I don't know. I've, uh, I've ignored the power rankings. I've got oh, okay. the standings. So, are we moving on to London? Uh, let's talk about the Ravens then. Uh, number six, the Ravens come out out of the gate so hot. Looked so good there on the first day. Put your Raven hat on. Because <laughs> um, we we, people were unsure. Hadn't seen a lot of them, not been a lot of scrims. And they said this, they were very unhappy because of people, and they understood it, right? We spoke to Rated and he said, you know, people have, he, you know, we understand people haven't seen us, haven't seen a lot of our scrims. You can't see our scrims, you know, so you'd have nothing to, to base it off. Uh, and then they came out against the subliners like a fucking wrecking ball. <coughs> yeah. yeah. They, li- they really, Waskins. they really, really look good the first day. Yeah. Yeah. And- yeah. Waskin shine more in that series than they did the entirety of last year. Yeah, he was he was so good. He was above and beyond the best player, and I think they they just came in maybe a bit flat against Paris. Paris, obviously, we found out are pretty decent anyway. Um, but Could I have possibly I, underestimated them. Yeah, a possibly. I don't know, though. Possibly. I, Could have been an ego know. thing, maybe. I don't know. But like, you know what? I love more than anything the fact that it's the first franchise broadcast, and you got Reese Price saying, "Shoot these cunts' bodies <laughs> on the broadcast multiple times." Wasn't, that against, clearly, wasn't that against the subliners? Yeah, and clearly, like the production couldn't understand what fucking word he was saying. He's going, "Shoot these cunts' bodies! Shoot these cunts' bodies!" And I'm like, "Yes, just it, just keep it coming." Uh, Typical oh, Reese Price fashion. Oh man. man, insanely funny. 
So, I was, yeah, because I was surprised that that listening stayed in. I and like, it stayed for a while. And they continued, <laughs> shoot their fucking bodies. Shoot their fucking bodies. It's like, yes, well, that's, keep them coming. We, <laughs> we talked about the, the European rivalry. But there is definitely a rivalry with the sub because Trey's in that oh, team. Yeah, and most of them have played with Trey. Oh, they wouldn't want to lose to Trey. They would oh, not want a million years. No, I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't even think Trey would have been that bothered. I think I think it was just they would not want to lose to him. No, no. way. No. No, no, I, I don't was, think he was, uh, there was, there was definitely these... a little bit of heat there. It's not They're... bad blood, but there is some heat yeah. there. Yeah, it, it, he wasn't saying shoot these guys' bodies. He was definitely, definitely saying cunts. 100%. I thought he said guys, so I was like, when you said that, I was like, I'll just no, go. No, no, no. If you no, listen, Tom is by... the authority on cunts. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, do not question <laughs> I'm just going to go with the authority on that accent. That's all I'm going to say. Um, well, Welsh? <laughs> <laughs> it's more north than me. <laughs> well, fuck I. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, let's move off from the Ravens then, because I know we're going to cover the Ravens again next week because there are events coming up. Um, let's uh, let's talk off. about the LA Gorillas. They're Better than people gave them credit for. Not unlucky. Surprising, surprising to be honest. Yeah, better than people gave them credit for. Yeah, and right. they were unlucky with the whole uh, um, thing as well. I, I was mind blown when they didn't scrim until what a week before Christmas. Like I thought they were done for. Like I've, I thought that's. Imp- pretty much impossible to cut for them to catch up and stuff but it seems is that why great. everyone's been kind of not giving them much credit yeah, because yeah, of the yeah. scrims pretty they sure. took time off yeah they just didn't scrim for the first month like Aix refused to play the game pretty and then sure. on top of that on paper you know the team doesn't look amazing you know like like a Florida situation where it's like oh, it? players but like yeah Aix Saints, they're all pros right well, yeah. Latesfield Aqua Aqua and who's the last one Decimate, decimate. That, that's not a that's bad it. team, you know. It's not a bad team, but I like on the in the grand scheme of things, when you look at the rest of them, you know, you'd look at it and you would think, yeah, yeah, okay, like they they could be okay. But then the fact that they didn't scrim, et cetera, et cetera, pushed them down, didn't it? So close game against the mutineers, uh, and then the obviously the Minnesota thing happened. Unfortunately, Up to, uh, and the and the hardline thing. Yeah, I mean, and it that's, yeah, yeah, that's it's one of those things that it's just like you know everyone on Twitter will kick off about it, et cetera, et cetera, but. Did you see the way they responded to it, like the, the franchise itself on, on Twitter? Uh, I seen yeah, the nah. put out statement. I can't say I read it all. No, yeah, it was, it was just like, we, we disagree with the thing, uh, with, with your judgment, but we'll, we'll accept it. Just please make sure this doesn't happen again. Which like make the, make the rules clearer going forward yeah. instead of making them up as you go along, which, yeah, for respect, like you handled that pretty well, in my opinion. Yeah, people. Uh, you live and you learn, don't you? Just don't use the fucking wrong perks next time. And, yeah. and I mean, I think, think was it was a. Um... The thing is, with that, though, he's. he's um... He didn't, didn't even have spe- he didn't even have specialists activated, so it made no difference. Yeah, I suppose they just have to be consistent with it. And they, the, like... the actual perk itself makes you get a streak faster, yeah. But streaks are banned, so if you're not using specialists, then it's an irrelevant perk. Oh yeah, exactly. So like, I don't know why they can't take stuff like that into consideration when I, th- I think it's because it's it the same no thing difference. they've always done, right? It's the letter of the law because that way they can be consistent with it, like even London... in these grey areas. Like, yep. as soon as they start giving excuses. That opens up a world of fucking grey areas, and they they can't do that. Like that's that's yep. one thing they will avoid at all points is is any way of a grey area because they want to go. Oh, three months down the line, it's like a, a different situation, but also has a grey area. They go, well, you gave it to them, but not these. And or, it's also no. yeah, with with making making classes online, that's the default perk on your first class. And for me, I know I just copy and paste on my classes. So if, he's obviously not seeing that perk. But to be fair, the new patch was supposed to ban all the perks that are not allowed and it hasn't banned that one that's the yeah. only one that hasn't banned so it's not all entirely his fault yeah it was unfortunate it's one of those things where i said without like going into like gray areas etc cetera, etc cetera, they if they did that for one thing then it's going to be another excuse down the line somewhere or if this happens again so like it's, it's like the london situation last year where the uh phase were playing up against was it lg and that mm-hmm. and the game said that that team won so they said well the game said they won like even though I disagreed personally with that decision, I sort of get it. Oh, like, you know what that I mean? That was bad. That, that was bad. That, yeah, that was but like, bad. you know, it's the same sort of concept of whatever the game says, sort of like, this is Wait, the route we go on, down. On, this, on this game, if if you like, if you win off the last tick and dom, it says the other teams won or it's a draw. Like, it doesn't count. Yeah. It doesn't register the last hit. Yeah, we had that happen to us on the GB, actually. So, so, like... And the other team I were like, it's... well, we won. And I was like, no, it's a fucking draw. So, so <laughs> Sp- Spencer was replying on Twitter to someone, and he said that the the, the ruling in this case would be that whoever's the game sit, 
they've said that they've won like like the same as last year. Mm-hmm. But that makes no sense because you've got two halves in Dom and it counts the tick in the first half. So surely you've got to count the tick in the second half. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the last tick. These are issues. Yeah, they, 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 need, they need to nail down on that now. But that was the thing. Ghost, that last tick in Ghost was always dodgy. They need to they need to like work out what, what they're gonna do with it because if it doesn't count then we know and it's whatever. If it does count then like it's sorted. But if it comes yeah. down to a situation, someone's gonna be absolutely tilted. Who's next then, Brucey? Toronto Ultra. Hey, you know what? They looked alright. Cami fucking MVP lad. Go on, <laughs> so wave. Oh man, that was the funniest yeah, thing. <laughs> oh man, when I, I, you know what? I, would, I, I, if I, I knew somebody's gonna tweet this out. If it was gonna be anybody, it was gonna be fucking Brad, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh Dude, man, when, he, when he stuck his thumbs up in that kid's face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's well, a classic. And like, I know again, we're going off topic, but the walkouts I really liked. Enable yeah. is king of the walkouts and will not be beaten. But at the same time, I think they kept changing them. They, they, one there was like the short one from backstage. Yeah, someone's maybe. going to get stabbed if not. Yeah, like, well, they will stab maybe, a player yeah. or headlock them or <laughs> like, something. What if, if they somebody don't do punches it? Scump? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If like Scump just gets smacked in the bollocks by a random geezer in the crowd, like it's it's, it's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> no. I mean, I suppose yeah, you probably have. Plus, it's cringe as fuck. To be completely honest, like, some sometimes, of the stuff like, they were the doing. The London ones, the London ones were good, but I, I suppose it's that Overwatch thing. You know, like they really pushed that in Overwatch. I was just waiting for someone to come out and do Gangnam Style or something. I was just turning it off and never tuning in again. Oh, <laughs> if, if someone started dabbing or something, that would have been the end of the walkout. Oh, yeah, we're, we're not in 2016 right anymore, are we? I think, <laughs> I think yeah, Elise was good, as somebody pointed out. But the the fact is, is that he, his walkout was like that, but then they got smoked. And it was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you have to back it up when you're coming out like that, pal. I don't envy the players, by the way, because obviously they have to do that. Oh, I'm yeah. sitting there going... Because it's one of those things like you're like, I've just got to walk out. And then you sit there going, but how am I walking? Is this normal? Am I walking normal now? <laughs> what do I do with my it's, hands? It's, what do I do with them? Because if they're going to have to do it every week and for years, like, are they, they're just going to have to keep one walkout, aren't they, really? Like yeah. the trademark one, like the WWE. Because yeah. they're just not going to change it. There's, there's only so many things you can do. <laughs> Go out to a song. Everyone, yeah, go, everyone well, come out to a song. It's the big show. Um, I think. I think the the only thing to to maybe do with that is have them all walk out at the same time. Yeah. Just do it like rapid, and then you can have like them all walk through, and you yeah. can get more well, of a man in the crowd. I also Which understand it's it's, it's opening weekend. As, you know, it's it's a big show, right? They're trying to make it a, a thing, and if the home grown stand found, you know, if there is a big roaring crowd for the home fans every week, then that walkout will be electric at every single home team. And I can see why. I, I imagine the ones in London are going to be berserk. They were last time. Um, I imagine players will end up wet, you know, because somebody will throw a pint about. Um, oh, yeah. And that'll be interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it works out in London. But uh, Ultra did well. <laughs> off topic. Ultra did well. Oh, yeah. Shit, I forgot we were talking about <laughs> Yeah, no, we got off to make. Uh, obviously, they got beat by Minnesota. Uh, 3-2 against Seattle Surge, um, who we will move on to in a minute, but Seattle didn't look very good uh, this weekend. They definitely have a weakness, and I mean, that's never good. In a, in I'm a... pretty sure they got six sword on Ramaza S&D, and then the day after they left, it got in the rotation again. I, like, if you get six sword at an event on S&D, man, I'm, I'm not playing that map again. Like, it's not happening. Didn't they, I, no, I'm sure they won the map next time against Surge, no, so, they, didn't they? No, they no. I, I remember them definitely I'm saying, I'm, saying, no, I'm saying Surge lost it. Oh, Surge lost it. All right, sorry. To uh, Mutineers last map, and then they played it last map again against Toronto the next day. Like, if that's me, I'll get 6 0 the day before, man. I'm, I'm not playing that map. That's getting vetoed. Bad point. They lost it twice. Yeah. I think so. I think the problem with Toronto is with people who weren't sure because the team wasn't locked down until a little while ago. Well, it was probably locked down, but they never told us. Um, and they were they were put fairly low in the rankings because it's again one of those teams where they've gone for strength in depth, uh, and what it has allowed to do. And I said this before, you know, I think the the benefit of the the strategy they've employed is if they do have players who are good, they have a better chance of finding those sleeper players with ten players, and they can play against each other. They can drop people in and out. They can figure out what works best for them, and that's what they've done. And you know that team come out swinging. Uh, whether or not they've got enough to to really set the entire league alight and go top i don't know but right now if they want to i think mid table is a really good position for toronto ultra this year because of the system they put in place it's like it's one of those systems where you because you've gone like a shotgun effect and you've got this many players there's going to be some people who have breakout years there's going to be somebody who is just better than you expected 
Yeah. That, they're, they're in a good position. I think they're thinking more long-term as well. Like, Assuming they do get some breakout players, they're going to have... Um, when they're going into negotiations, they're going to be able to bring more players, like trade, if you know what I mean. Like They've got a bargaining chip there. If, if another org wants a player, they, they've got a bit of like movement they can use rather than just signing five players and uh, hope that it works. Yeah. I think uh, with Toronto, they branded themselves that even if they lose, they haven't really lost. Like, so they've, yeah, they've yeah. kind of been also... They, that's literally one of the one of the market materials. The part was... Um, even if we lose, we win, or just some weird shit like that. So it's like even they were expecting the fucking L throughout the weekend. Anyway, you know, like they just seem to want to have fun. But yeah, the the, the, the thing they've got in place with, with with ten players is like a bit forward thinking. We'll have to see if that works out. Yeah. But I like it. I said before I like it. I said mm-hmm. last week. Admittedly, last week I dug them out for their coaching methods, but um, I think I think it's a good strategy. I really, I really like. I would have liked to have seen more teams and do it, but I know that some. T- here, oh, I'm not going to get into this tangent, but I am going to bring up a point very, very quickly. And this is something that the the, the star, the, the fans don't know, but people on, who, who know a little bit more on the inside do. Some of these teams spent very differently. Obviously, the salary cap is, what, 1.575 or something, and then you get the luxury tax. There are some of these five mans that have blown that salary cap, uh, yeah. and there are some of these teams that have still got the significant bit left. Uh, and some of them lost to the others. Very interesting, because I would be pissed <laughs> if a yeah. team was worth significantly less than mine. Good scouting, isn't it? Good, yeah. good team choice, etc., etc. I mean, look, it's hard coming to year to year as well as the game changes. You don't know who's going to be amazing. You don't, And that's one of the problems and one of the difficulties, I suppose, with picking a team each year. Irrelevant well, I, if it being franchise. I heard like, um, the substitute for... One of the teams, oh, I can't say much, but if I do, then it's going to make it obvious. But I kind of want to say it anyway to spite them. But are like <laughs> earning like fucking shit tons of money, like all, <laughs> almost like into the six figures, and they're, they're just not going to play. And it's it's not someone oh, who you'd mate, expect either. It's, it, it's, <laughs> it's not one of the people you're expecting. It's it's one of the shitters, basically. So, mate, I don't get why teams have like signed people that aren't. I've got no chance of playing. Not what like the literally. Well, like maniac just... <laughs> for Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like him. Embos for Huntsman. Like he's good, but he's not gonna fucking play, is he? Let's be real. I think. Oh. I think it was just like. <laughs> I think some of the teams have gone in with that narrow mindset of you know we're not going to change our main roster, and I, I I dislike it. I would I would sit here and I would I dislike it. It, it just takes away so much from the value of the players, and we've talked about this so many times. You know, if you've got a team that knows they're never going to be fucking changed, they, they, you know, where's the, where's the, that extra bit of hunger from? Fuck, I could be swapped out here. There's, there's got to be a little bit. It's always, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit more of a something nipping in your heels, giving you an extra five percent because you know, fuck, somebody might take my job here. Sure. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on from Toronto Ultra. Let's move on to Seattle Surge. Arguably um, the worst weekend. Arguably the worst. Week. Well, no, I would. Someone, say... someone said in the chat they didn't win an S and D. Yeah, oh no, they were <laughs> They're shockingly bad S and D team. Shit. Which is you're not winning an S and D, it's looking slow for you, isn't it? Like that's, that's potentially forty percent of the entire yeah. series, right? Yeah. So I, I say arguably the worst because I think I had a bit higher expectations for them than maybe a other couple of people. And oh, no, I, in fairness, you've got three rings on that team. Well, well, that's it. Like uh, and Octane uh, and Able did well last year, right? It's it's one of these things like you better do well. Octane, by the way, you know we saw that I spoke about the draft thing last week. We saw a draft thing where Octane had gone number one again, <laughs> right? People, I mean, it's hard, it's, hard, it's hard not to put him number one, how consistent he is every year, but like... I mean, he had a bad start last year as well, so... <sighs> it's, 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 it's not it, looking good. Apparently, him and... Oh, I've seen a tweet, like... Octane and Slack, like, bad at S&D at the start again, no shot there or something. Like, someone someone said that, and um, if that's true, it makes sense, like... Is fair. it confirmed... Because I've, I've gone on to Carpedia. Is it confirmed Teddy Rex is their S&D analyst? He has, a, he has a sub spot. I don't know if it was for them. Wait, actually, it is because I've been on his stream and he's got the the surge overlay. Yeah, it might not be a sub spot. You might be right. It might be an analyst spot. Because it says here in the organization stuff, like Nubs is their head coach, Teddy Rex is their S and D analyst. And I think I'd imagine think, we get S and D analyst in Seattle right now. Jesus. I know. I know. Panda has a sub spot. Does is there anyone else that has a uh, sub spot? Proto. Proto. Okay. So they're out on. So they've got the section out on loan. Is they're technically their substitutes? Is is Panda and Proto? Teddy Rex is down as the S and D analyst, and Nubsy's the head coach. 
coaching ah, staff. Ah, so no, he'll he'll be on a sub spot because you have to have a a player. They have to have a sub with the team, and then them two are on, were playing on the weekend. So there one of them, will, yeah, one of them will be like Teddy Rex will be signed, or Joey Nubs. He might be signed as a coach, whatever. Like the way they've went about it. Yeah, just the the. Can you imagine going back into that, having that kind of S and D? Like it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a lot to unpack, and I don't know if I've ever seen teams go from. It just takes a bit of effort, man, with S and D on this game, honestly. Yeah, but we're already three, four months in, man. <laughs> yeah, but it's... they probably barely played it. That's no excuse, oh. though, is it? <laughs> it's, not an, it's, it. Not, it's not an excuse for this weekend, but it, what I'm saying is, it's like it's it's fixable. I think respawns a harder thing to fix. To be honest, you're not naturally already there with respawn. It's like it's a lot more fundamentals and stuff to go through in a lot more like, situationals, whereas S and D can be tiny things. Like if you put the effort in with S and D, yes, in my in, from my experience, anyways, you can get better at it much easier. I think that were they statistically the worst S and D team this weekend. Well, if they're not on a map, they've got to be. Yeah, <laughs> four, zero for four. You can't get much worse than that. Yeah, that's not good. That's when Joe Nubs is probably going to fucking sweating and shit. <laughs> I've got to get these boys in shape. <laughs> like we've got the, the respawns all right, but yeah, my God. Seen the got... to say that they were the LV store today or something as well. Eh? Just... They got to they got to start paying Teddy more or something. <laughs> get him in. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, we in, do? So... I can't remember if you can do in series subs. No, I, I think, think you so. can. Really? Not in series, I don't think. I think it's going to be set before the series. That's fair. Um, all right, let's move on to Optic Gaming Los Angeles. Um, not a good weekend for them. You, not a good you, weekend. Admittedly, you think with the talent on the team, though, they should be doing better, right? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Who's this? Optic. Optic. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> they needed a they needed a big weekend um, because of the optic hate that is now very fashionable. Lost to Paris three two, right? Was it lost 3-2? to Paris. Lost to the Huntsman. We thought they would lose to the Huntsman, but obviously, it is one of those things where the brand has been basically just kicked in the teeth repeatedly yeah. um, because of what happened. So it's a big. It was a big weekend for them. Take the brand and all that out of it, though. When you think of that that team, they've just been complaining since the start. So you, you don't really expect anything less from them against Huntsman, and pa- probably losing to Paris was an upset. But in the grand scheme of things, when you they're all sat complaining every day, then it it, it translates over. Like I'm pretty sure Jacob and Slasher were complaining all the time at the start of IW as well, and then it it just took them to bash their heads together and just actually. Just put in a bit of work and they got really good at the end of IW. So they're probably going to do that now, to be honest. They're probably actually going to start putting in proper graft. And they'll prob- they might not, I don't know if they're at London, but they'll probably be better in the next month or so, I reckon. They'll, they'll be where they need to be. Because I think with the players they've got as well, J Cap and Slasher need to be on them, man. Like they need to be nailing them down. But, or else they yeah. like, from the sounds of it last year, like TJ and Dashi are just loose cannons. That- Who was the last person on that team? Uh, Jake Epps, Slasher, Quavo, Dash. Kenny, I mean, I think Kenny was a loose cannon at the start of last year as well, but I think Slasher put him in his place or something. I don't know. So yeah, he, he struggled on, on, uh, on 100 Thieves at the beginning. Yeah. But like, do, do we think Pac Man's a good coach? Or like, does he, is he good coach material at least? Uh, 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 who knows? Who knows at this I'm point? I'm not sure. Like, I think knowing his personality, that he very much could be. Honestly, I think he, just would all... tell them, he would tell them. For right, that okay. team, it depends whether Slasher is going to listen to him. I, it, they got they got replays last year who obviously res- you would respect because mm-hmm. why, why wouldn't you? Scary as fuck. Like every time we look at him, he's like, yeah. So like nicest yeah, guy in the world, scary. but you look at him, he's like, yeah. So like if if Slash if Slasher is not going to listen to him, then he's pointless being there. Simple as really. Yeah. yeah. No, if, he, if, he, if he's on board with it, then it'll work out. That is that is definitely one of the teams where you're sitting there going. That team will probably get better during the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of teams I wouldn't yeah. say. That's what I'm trying to say. Team, but that team I can see ramping up. Definitely. Maybe they need to get rid of some of the pressure that was on them from coming out as the new faces of Optic, perhaps. Yeah. So Someone in the chat said Dash isn't good at this game, yeah. But I don't think he understands how hard it is to like to be good or like consistently good in a game where your team don't aren't on the same page or don't know exactly what they're doing. Like It's actually really hard to shine like that when you don't have a, like, a set way of playing and stuff. Look at you in World War Two. <laughs> shite. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> shite. Um, let's go on to the, the the Fallen Kings then. Dallas Empire. Um, and I, mm. I've introduced them like that just because it's a crown. I thought that was nice. Yeah. The uh, hardest, hardest, by the way, matchups of the weekend. Yeah. yeah. No oh. sense. How ma- did they, they won one map, right? Or they won an S&D against uh, Huntsman. 
Blackburn had it up. No, they, they won't. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they won't yeah. convincingly as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I expect their S&D to be pretty good the whole year. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people were looking at Shotzi not having a very good weekend, but... Shotzi and Illy, man, what, like, your first event. The thing is, as well, it's not even an event, is it? Like, at least when a normal first event would be, like, you'll play pool play and then you'll go into bracket, but these have just been dropped straight into, like, yeah. you're playing one series a day, like... And the thing is, as well, they're going into a game with a lot of pressure on it because they're going up against Chicago, yeah, even though that, the, the rivalry means like, nothing to them, like, so to speak, you mm-hmm. know, and they're going into that situation. I, I do feel sorry for them a little bit because it's a high-pressure situation, but that's why you pick these it, big it, teams. It, as in my you. opinion, they can only get better. Oh, I don't know how Illy... 100%. I don't, I don't know yeah. how Illy played, but apparently, like, that's seen shots. you got Burger the week, but, like, they can only play better. Like, yeah. they're only going to get better. Yeah, like, I wouldn't... He's actually not in the end. I think I, a lion man just ahead of get the it. No, it's actually Trey. <laughs> oh. Yeah, apparently. But I, a lion really? man's going to do bur- burgers, burgers of the week. I think he's going to do a team one rather than... So <laughs> oh, yeah, good. They'll be happy about that, wouldn't they? That's <laughs> yeah, be... yeah, they'll be delighted. <laughs> um, I, I think yeah. it's hard yeah. to, to judge Empire here because when you're playing against Atlanta and, and Chicago, yeah, maybe they could have done better, but they could just be third. That's the funny thing. But yeah. all being said, if they fucking start losing to teams that out of them two, out of them top two, then then you look at them and think, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, they're, this is the they're thing. not top three. Yeah, this is the thing. Like we, nobody really knows exactly where everybody is. Look, Paris could be the best team in the league. We just don't know that. It's true. Even even Kismet says that that everyone else is playing for. Um, he said in two interviews that everyone else outside of them three teams, Huntsman. Atlanta and Dallas are playing for like at the minute are playing for to be the fourth best team. Like they're head and shoulders above everyone, and they're, they're trying to everyone's trying to catch them up. Yeah, which is, which is fair enough. Like if you're saying that, and if I think it's probably true, if a player that's saying that that's currently fourth in the league, let's, uh, what, let's what, talk se- what separates those from from the the nine other teams though? You know, is it just is it just pure it's, talent or how they've been practicing the beginning of the game and the way all the scrims were before? Yeah. Right. Like everybody knew, like every, the thing I heard from pro players was like you could tell they were a different caliber, and that's that's less subjective for me because when pros obviously recognize, you know, when a when somebody is a good thing, they're like they understand like yeah this team is good for these reasons. We're not just getting smoked for no reason, um, and that's that's basically why Dallas put them up there. But I tell you somebody else I expected to be higher, and that's our very last in the standings, uh, New York Subliners. Should have sub sensor in. That was their problem. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they started the game, and I'm talking like the first couple of weeks, like really well. Like they were one of the first teams scrimming. A lot of people funda- said that they were getting their scrims, fundamentals yeah. down. They've they've not streamed one scrim, so don't know how the scrims have went. This is the but, thing we just don't know until everyone sort of played everybody and had a good couple of tournaments. They could actually be decent. One thing. one thing I'd say about that team is I can see them having a major pacing issue with the current meta. Uh, Trey and accuracy on the same team. Attach isn't the fastest player with it with a, um, like with a sub. From my from my in my opinion, anyways, I don't think he's like a proper in your face like yeah. crackhead like. Zuma isn't day. that sort of player anymore, is I he mean, really? I mean, he probably is the the most on that team. But he, well, you who, wouldn't who say he's like, a, like an absolute who, crackhead. Who like. is the, who's the last guy? Temp. Temp. Oh, Temp. I mean, he is, I guess. But I just think, like, at the minute, they're going to struggle with Trey and accuracy being on the same team. But that's just my opinion. Dog in. Dog just, in. No. Don't no. Need it. Yeah, Doug does not, not improve that team. Not, I'm sorry. No. Doesn't improve who, that team. Who's their other sub happy? Happy, like, yeah. Uh, uh, like, I don't know. Is Happy even play last year? Like, I know he was good in the past, but like that's another thing. Like, they've just put all of their eggs in, the, in one basket like, with five players. Yeah, which I don't understand. So we need a sleeveless, a sleeveless guy coming yes. out from the top yes. rope straight into a seat, WWE style or something, and then <laughs> and then, the and then winning WWE. winning winning um, map five from. Easy. I really hope they they sell sleeveless t-shirts. At <laughs> That'd be great. Um, but no, that was maybe the biggest thing. And bear in mind, they announced their coaching staff first, right? That was Revan and Krez that went over straight away. Mm-hmm. Yep. And everyone was hyping it up on the biggest pickups. They've got a good, they've got a good set of coaches. Like, to be fair, I think they they do get better, but it, it just depends on the, the the like the changes to the game. Honestly, like we could have had a bad weekend. You know, these things happen. I just... And and boxer too too preoccupied trying to sell merch than actually making NYSL a viable team. You know, so. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I just think any team that picks up two like pretty slow ARs at the start of a game is making a big mistake, man. Because the 
the game always changes to subs, like. And it then when, this time, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. It, it it normally changes around this time of the year, but it's already, it's like it was already gone before December, before Christmas. Yeah. I mean, right. we get, we're fortunate now we get the benchmark in two weeks of, of how these teams, well, not even that, week and a half now, of, of a tournament. We can see these teams go up against each other um, and go forward. But um, let's, do, let's do questions in the chat while I ask uh, Vortex. One, one quick question. How was your weekend, dude, of the challenge? We didn't get to see a lot. Uh, I know, but you will. Um, do you want to you you furnish us with what happened? Because I heard you were a bit of a worry. Didn't you throw up and then uh, walk to the stage or whatever? Yeah, something like that. So Friday... Easy game. Then we played the three, three of the players that knocked out Mind Freak at Miami. Like not the ones that sent them to lose us, the ones that sent them home. Oh, well, like that, Awakening yeah. and all that. No, no, they were the team that sent them a losers, but there was a team that sent them home that we didn't see. Oh, I forgot uh, my name. I don't know what. They, I don't know who they were, but apparently we played three of them. Uh, that was a decent series two. Or then we played. Someone called Ethan Too Nice that knocked out Shea Sweeney's team from winners. Beat them the next day, 2-0. Then we played Optic Academy team. That was a good game. Beat them 2-0. Then we played played um, the hybrid team that got fourth with Spoof Seattle Surge Academy. Yeah. Uh, beat them 3-1. That was super close series. I remember watching that on the Periscope. It was like one super, or two points in close. each game. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a good series. And then we smoked UIU 3-0. Like, that was... Yeah. That was, that, was, that, was really, really, that was really good series. From At us. that like, point, every... when you did that, I thought you might go on and win it. Because that was like... I... Yeah. 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 And then, I don't know what happened in the next series. Like, just didn't just didn't turn up, to be honest. Just didn't... It wasn't the same, like, vibe that like, we were done on. It just wasn't flowing. They'd just come off a of round 11, game five win as well. And we'd been waiting for an hour and a half. That's always tough. We got smoked the first map, won the second, lost by one point in the dom, and then lost by like ten points in the hard point. That that was against the team that came second, the other hybrid team. And then had to wait around doing media for an hour, and it was already twelve o'clock at night by this time, mm-hmm. or half eleven. And we'd already been in the venue since half eight. Well, I had. So that we're already on like a 14 hour day, stay around, do media for another hour. Done that, got home, my well, hotel, had a McDonald's, thought I'll get us thought I'd be getting five hours sleep, walk out an hour later with food poisoning. So then and from what turned into from a 19 hour day it turned into a, um yeah, well, when I got back to the venue, I was had been awake for like 30 hours or some shit like that, and then I was still thrown up. I got there about 20 minutes before the game was supposed to play. This was against S&G. Turn up to the station, shoot up to 200 bots. My, it feels like I'm being stabbed, like it's horrible. So I, I went like, I went to the side to talk to uh, my owner, Kevin uh, Warsurge, just have a little chat with him before I started. And then he ended up getting a medic for us, I'm pretty sure, because I was in a bad way. Like I could barely even walk. Like I was just had nothing, no energy, nothing left in us. And... The medic was like taking my vitals and stuff, and then at that point, we it turned ten, and the, the admins knew I was with a medic, and they just just took a map off with like you forfeit in map one, just no sympathy. <laughs> like I'm <laughs> sat, I'm sat there with medics, and they just they just didn't care, didn't give up. So then I start being sick when I'm with the medics in this bag that they give us, and the admins can see this, and I'm like I was sick a good four or five times. And then after after that, they were like, oh, you should probably go to the hospital. And I just said, nah, fuck it. I'll just go after. And then I walked back to my station just before we forfeited the whole series and played with a bucket next to us. That was at quarter past 10. And then we lo- we ended up losing. I, I, to be fair, I was I was literally just sat at the station like this. I just leaned back as far as I could so that, um, so that my stomach stopped hurting a bit. And I was just there to... Just to hold my controller, to be honest, like I could not, I couldn't calm properly. Um, I was just, I was fucked basically. Like I was in a bad, bad way, and we lost, we lost round eleven, in the first, like well, the second map technically. You we guys lost. still look alright. I was, yeah, I was, I was yeah. that was the most surprising thing because I think we'll see that. I, like, oh. I um, yeah, I'm, I'm the one that pretty much calls the majority of the shots and like tells people what to do more or less. Me, me and Moose mostly, but. I just couldn't even talk. Like, pre- 
I couldn't talk. That was pretty much the bottom line. I couldn't talk. Like it was just hurting me to talk. I was just fucked. Like really, really, really fucked. The rough one. Fair enough. Yeah, well, we, we, we ended up one. winning the dorm and then we lost a half point by seven points or something. Yeah. It's a, it's a hard one. I expect to see you again soon next time. Fully, fully rested up. Um, we're well, doing questions in the chat now, but here's a question I actually had, which I thought was really uh, kind of interesting. Uh, what You're on Team War, right? Not an academy team. Was there like a an a- atmosphere about the academy teams? Because technically the academy teams should be the best teams, right? The top, the top 12 mm. academy teams should technically be the best teams. That didn't seem to always be the case. Was there like a... Like an extra um, bit of holy shit, these are a, a, an academy team coming in. I this? think you're going to allow London. I know you'll know that, but just for people on the chat, we could allow London because obviously Mad Cat didn't go out there yeah, as well, I which would have made a difference to them. From my point of view, I didn't give a fuck because I know all the players on each academy team. I know how good they're going to be or how good they're not going to be. I think for teams like maybe Shea Sweeney's team, that haven't a lot of them haven't got a lot of experience. Teams like that... Um, you know, new teams that are probably like not played as much. They would probably sit themselves a bit saying they're playing in an academy team, but it didn't make a difference for me to be fair. But in theory, yes, they should be the best teams. But at the same time, they're forced to play with players that are on academy's benches that might not be as good. Well, that's the other thing. Right? They're all names. supposed to be salaried, and you know, if you've got pro players on there, those pro players are on the salary. Um, and then, obviously, you know, they, they, the, the team gets contracts because they're an academy team. Well, I say that. There are some very naughty old franchises out there now that I know haven't paid their players yet or given them contracts for their academy oh, teams. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, speak, call, speak to me about that after that. this. Speak yeah. to me about that after <laughs> this because I want to report on that shit if that's happening because that's not right. Um, but yeah. we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to that. But no, it's interesting. I thought the challenger was like, it, it seemed like it's very much competitive because... There are obviously all these academy teams coming in, and obviously the European standing over its best. And we know the European teams, you know, rocket pretty much all the time. Singularity, big showing for them again. Um, yeah, uh, I am gonna, wondering. I, I will say something as well. Think like, and I think the the boys on Singularity will agree with us. They were absolutely shocking before Christmas and just after Christmas. And to be fair to them, man, they've they've like they put in a they must have put in a decent amount of graft because they went from like here to like. Up there come the, like the last two K in the event, so props to them. Like, they've done really well. Yeah, I wonder when these franchises teams are going to start looking at the European AMs and going, "We'll take a couple of those." It's, it's but... almost like we were talking about it this oh, in no. uh, September, Bracey, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. Like, it's hmm. like there's value in Europe. If they just took a couple of subs, they'd have more viable options. Yeah, and... crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's mental. Anyway, let's get through these because it has been a long one. It's questions in the chat time. Um. <laughs> Thoughts on Frosty? He looks nasty. He does. He does look good. Um, but it's always going to be difficult to really judge him until we get into the, into into more games. We need a big sample size. We need to see him against the best teams, the worst teams, um, because this is a very competitive, <coughs> very very good players all around. Um, let's see if he can keep it up consistently. I don't think of anything more about Frosty there. Really, I think no, just... I haven't seen him enough. Yeah, let's have to keep an eye on it. Um, People ask about Breezy isn't on the starting roster. I think there are a lot of players uh, who could be on the starting rosters. Uh, teams yeah. have locked in early. The thing is with Breezy as well, he, like, he, um, he only came through on the last game. So it's like, and he's, it's just hard, isn't it? Like to put him on a starting roster, you don't know how he's going to be. He's on that, he's on Paris's bench, right? So yeah, if, if they, if like they, this, I'm pr- like, I scrimmed them. So I know that they scrimmed with lots of different variations to the team and, Obviously, they've just went with what, what they think's best at the end of the day. That's all they can do. So if he hasn't made the cut, then he's just got to keep grinding. Yep, he's good enough. From what you, you would presume he'd be good enough. Yeah, someone's asking about the fans. Uh, it felt like the fans weren't there all the time, although there's not a big chance from last year. I thought they sounded all right, to be fair. Hey, it was for, a, for a team, that, especially yeah. mostly... For a team that's not optic. And I liked good. it. Like, I, I put a tweet out afterwards saying it was nice to hear them supporting their hometown team because yeah. I was concerned that it was just going to be everyone like the fan favorites but it sounded like there was some actual and I was really like skeptical about the whole homestand thing still I'm to a point and we've only had one event but it was nice to see that people from Minnesota were supporting the Minnesota they, team they've well. sent a ben- they've set a uh, benchmark to be fair for the other crowds so oh yeah 100% at the 100%. new other home series yep I, and I don't. I'm not worried about London in that respect. London will yeah, obviously crush London it. London have got it fucking 
sorted. Yeah. <laughs> the... well, we'll start drinking for London in a minute. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's always going to be the thing. London's going to have the advantage because we know that people are going to go there for a drink. And that's another thing is that a lot of people at the venue, and clusters include, said the crowd were really good. Maybe it just wasn't coming through to the stream. So, yeah. You could always yeah. take that into consideration. Chanting they should do. They should do like fake cheers, like uh, one of the Blast Pro series did before. Yes. <laughs> just, just pl- like there's nothing, and then like the next match suddenly is the, the, the loudest roar you've ever heard. Woo! Like we wouldn't know any different, <laughs> would we? At home was plugs. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. I think and obviously it'll be great. There's people saying there's not that many chances last year. Well, these aren't established brands yet. They don't have established chance. And but thankfully, they're not the same chances last year anyway. Yeah. I want to hear let's pop together again. Fuck that. Um, although it probably will come back. Uh, and obviously it's not London. London's going to be chanting just because they feel like it about all kinds of things, including yeah. things that they would rather wasn't on the broadcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. Uh, who will host the best overall event? Now, the obvious answer here is London, but I don't, it's for the fans, but it's a 32-team uh, challenger, which means there may not be as many fans as they would like. Um, I think they may have one of the best events, but in terms of like taking everything into account, it's between London... Chicago and LA, and the no, LA one because no. because there's two teams going there, right? Who um and it's LA. LA where's always... Champs being hosted, mate? We're not even higher. How the fuck do I? Know? All I'm going to say <laughs> is Champs will be the, they'll put the most money into that. They'll yeah. go in a place where everybody wants to go watch it, so that will be the best event. It can't not be. They can't afford to give away so much money there and it not be the best event. Surely, yeah. What was the question? Sorry. Uh, who do you think is going to host <laughs> the best event? Oh this year? shit! Okay. Yeah, what? We think so. It's just be champs, unless champs is a separate event. I don't know. I don't think it is champs. It's playoffs, isn't it? It's not champs this year. There's no Better champs. Playoffs, yeah. I swear, I swear. Uh, when I was writing about it, they they they've called it champs. Oh, Are they? I, I believe so. College is it? Is it, is it, a, is it an arm champs as well? Yeah, probably. Have. That's yeah, like a research. Yeah, something about that. We'll figure it out. Not all the deals are out. Well, they probably don't have a fucking clue what's going on. <laughs> yeah. A few more questions. Uh, we've already talked about together. Singularity. Something asking about uh, the talent. We've already talked about that, and I don't want to. I don't want uh, to <laughs> disparage members of the community and stuff like that. And, and also, or... what I would say for people saying that, like, oh, everyone was sort of backing the talent, like each of the talent up and stuff like that. From being there, it's a, it's a big team, and everybody sort of wants everybody to be doing well. And obviously, everyone's going to offer support where it is needed. To certain people, that's all I'll say. Yeah, uh, let's have a little bit. one more question. Um, we've covered most of these, that's the thing. You guys have been tuning in late. I see where I see this. Um, well, we have been going for about seven hours now, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's been, been the hours. longest one by far, <laughs> hasn't it? <laughs> Tell the fucking uh, you CDLs back. Let's uh, let's just do our final thoughts and and that do because none of the yeah. questions I think are very good this week. You guys need to do better. Um, all right, Adam. <laughs> final thoughts from you. Final thoughts on on the Minnesota uh, event. Say what you, yeah, say what you wanted to say, um, and then you know shout outs or whatever. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, oh, God. <laughs> it, it can be better. It will get better. London. We should all look forward to that. Um, if if you want honest opinions from people who can who are hundred percent again like away from everything else, so like people are friends with talent and such. I I'm not too much. So like by Adam Fitch anywhere if you want if you want honesty then I, I can promise you that you may not like it but but that's me yeah at by Adam Fitch anywhere. Fair enough. Make sure you give that guy a follow on Twitter and I think you also do a great esports podcast. So thank you very make much. Sure you, make sure you tune that one out. Uh, Vortex from you. Any shout outs? Any last thoughts? Yeah, last thoughts on the event would be just give us a fucking challenger stream. Like, give us something, man. How, like the, These events, like, how are we as I'm supposed to come through or get any kind of hype around us at all to like to come, get to the next level in the future without any kind of uh, showcase? But other than that, yeah, decent event. Um, didn't get to watch too much of the pro like side of it, but the venue looked pretty sick, like mm-hmm. the pro side. And uh, yeah, decent event. Shout out to, uh, to Team War. I know Kevin was here before, like such a really, really good org, like actually care about their players. Like as an amateur organization, it's pretty rare. Most of them are just in it looking to make a quick raise. Um, but he actually like really looked after me, took me to hospital and stuff. He got getting us waters all weekend, food as as you'd expect, but it doesn't happen that much. So yeah, shout out to Walt, Test- and that's all I've got to say. Testament to that. Kev's a good fella. Uh Tan? Um, nothing particular from me apart from you know, th- thank you to everybody uh, who was tweeting saying, "Oh, you guys should be there, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. We we obviously do appreciate that, uh, and hopefully we'll have some good news at some point. Um, but uh, other than that, the normal things, 
of this will be on youtube if you did miss any of it which you probably might have because it was a long one um of course if you um did miss any of that it's on the youtube we'll be on spotify we'll be on apple music and all the other relevant channels um and that should be up tonight should be <laughs> it is a long one it'll take a while to render so it'll be yeah. a few hours okay yeah i uh i want to say thank you to adam fitch and uh steve obviously this has been a long one i do appreciate it we know the event ones have got a lot to cover and we appreciate your your, your input and stuff and it, it, we know i know it's not easy right to come on and, and talk for a couple of hours you could be doing anything else like what, binging netflix or something that's probably hmm. something more entertaining for you sometimes but people i hope the fans do appreciate it i know i certainly do um i also appreciate the fans i know there's a lot of call of duty podcasts out there at the moment um i'm hoping we offer something a little bit different we try to give multiple points of view on this podcast it's not always easy because obviously like me and tom would like to be hired at some point um but <laughs> We, we, but we, but try, we try to it might get right. seriously interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we we, uh, we 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 try to keep it real here. I believe education and different points of view is very healthy um, for engaging the, the community. It's no point us avoiding something a lot of the time because uh, then it, it just doesn't help anybody. Um, so I appreciate you coming in. If you I appreciate the comments on the YouTube, appreciate downloading on Spotify. All of this makes me want to keep doing it. So as long as you're here, we'll try and be here for as long as possible. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.